This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Marine Layer. I love it. It's clothing, by the way. Just so the name could be deceptive. Like could be some sort of oil coating for, yeah, for a ship. Exactly. For example. Or like a blanket for the ocean. Sure. <laughs> yep. But it's not. It's clothing. It's clothing. It's good. Actually, that's more what I'm interested in, if I'm honest. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host... Nick Mason. But I'm we're, here. But we're not alone this week, Mason. I'm sorry, what? I mean, we're never alone because there's two of us. I'm sorry, what? There's a third person in the studio uh, this week. Start from the beginning. What are oh, you saying? Oh, God. Returning guest. <laughs> yes. Charlie Clawson. Charlie's two here. Two years since you've been? I don't know. Uh, it feels like. Yeah, it probably was two years. It might, it might I was talking be. about Wolf Creek. And what so was that the weather two like? Years yeah. Ago. What or, was or the weather like? Months. 18 months. Was it the we- it was was it winter? I can't it remember. It was wintry. I remember he had a nice jacket on. <laughs> I remember that I had actually been out the night before quite late, and when I turned up, I was worried about whether or not I had any voice to talk. <laughs> oh, right. And then when I heard it, I sound like B. Arthur on the actual <laughs> recording. My voice is so strained. Uh, you're in town for a thing that didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. you're obviously from Tofop, uh, which a lot of people listen to this. Yeah, listen to. Fantastic podcast you do with Will Anderson. Yes. Where you just talk. It's a couple of mates, a couple of comedy <laughs> mates spinning some comedy yarns. What is it? A comedy conversation between two old mates. Yes. Just, just keep chipping at it. I'm sure there's a market for a yeah. couple of mates having a chat. <laughs> two middle-aged white guys yeah. just airing their views on the world. Absolutely. That's what the world needs more of. Definitely. Mm. But before we forget and get into the show, you've got a new web series as well. Yes. you put together. So mm. uh, Tofop actually has a channel on YouTube that no one knows about, Tofop TV. Mm. And so uh, I made a web series mm. called Lessons for Life with Alan Mercedes, which I guess is a bit of a spoof on the current wave of uh, male life coaches, the Jordan Petersons of oh, the yeah, world. yeah, right. Uh-huh. I love them. Um, star- I love them all. Starring Richard Pyros, who people might know from uh, Hacksaw Ridge, which I watched... Last night, didn't even realise... I didn't know he was in that. He was in it. He plays Teach in Hacksaw Ridge. I was like, oh, there's Alan Mercedes in Hacksaw Ridge without a beard. Is he saved by... uh, What's his name? Spider-Man? I can't remember. He makes it to the end. You'd remember if Spider-Man swung in and (laughs) saved him, right? That's an odd film, isn't it? Like, I literally... I I, I don't know why it took me so long to see it, but tonally, it's all over the shop. It's kind of like this anti-war film that really loves battle scenes. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Have you seen it? Uh, only selected clips. Yes. It's people making fun of, you know, Spider Man. They're like, yeah. "You're not good at war," and then he's the best at war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm on board now. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's it, like it's like Forrest Gump meets Gallipoli. It's that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's what it says on the box cover. Yeah. <laughs> so I watched uh, Lessons for Life. With oh Alan yeah, what do you think? Look, I'll be honest. I don't think he's a very good life coach. No. <laughs> I'm honest. But then, in in so far, I found a lot of humour in that. <laughs> So I, don't, I don't know if you meant to do that, but he's a fun, it's pretty funny and well, that he's not very good at that. Well, actually, it was uh, a lot of the stuff that's in it is based on my own experiences with life coaches. I have done life coaching in <laughs> yeah. the past. The very first episode is all about visualization in which he uh, gets a guy to select certain items from a table in which will tell you something about your life. And that's uh-huh. actually something that happened to me. I went and saw a life coach and she took me into a room that was a table covered in trinkets and little action figures and uh-huh. toys. And I yeah. had to pick out certain things and then place them on a on like a sheet of butcher's paper and then we have to draw like where these things ranked in my life and I hadn't really <laughs> thought about what I was no. picking I just got the first four things I saw which is like a lego man and a button and all this kind of <laughs> stuff and from that impulsive decision she was like giving me all this like information about my life and why I'd chosen these things it was it was bizarre and did you take on any of that advice or did you leave and go what I, was that oh I did a, I did a second session with her where we went into her living room and I had to hop from side to side of the living room to like jump from where I wanted to where I was to where I wanted to be oh, okay I get you <laughs> it was I think her her thing was she was all about helping people find their creativity and I think well I sort of work in a creative field anyway that's yeah, you've got that uh-huh. I need life that, skills yeah. I need to work yeah. out how to stop being such a man child yeah. <laughs> have you got any of those advice how do I internet bank yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's based it's roughly based on that roughly based princess, on that yeah. but it was mm. just a chance Richie is uh, one of the funniest mm. actors I know and and he uh, robbed quite a bit of it yeah yeah, well, we just workshopped it. He well, was, you both did, sorry. He, yeah, he, was, he was in town for a couple mm. of days. So we literally, we came up with the idea. We knew we wanted to do something together. We came up with the character and then we sat down and said, we wrote 
came out the idea for six episodes. I went and wrote them in two days mm. and then we shot them in two days. Uh-huh. So the whole thing was made in the space of, a, of less than a week. Yeah. But then about six months of post-production. Yeah, right. <laughs> I basically taught myself the entire process of like uh, editing and sound mixing mm. and yeah. stuff through this. But plus, plus Alan Mercedes is a centaur. So you've got to CGI the back end. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. So, you know, it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. The CGI budget was through the roof. Yeah, well, it's got to be. Yeah, but yeah that end result. Well, yeah, yeah very good. perfect. And we're already rebooting it. I'd like to announce the uh, Lessons for Life reboot, all female cast. Yeah, good, excellent. That'll go down really well. Oh, people will love it. No one thing about the internet is all it's female reboot. It's going to right great. away. Yeah. First bit of news, though. Oh, so that's linked below. I'll, okay. I'll link it below if people want to check Thank it you. out. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. No worries at all. And did uh, you plug TOEFOP as well? Did we plug that yeah, properly? Yeah, the, the podcast. Yeah, you, uh, Planet Podcast. I mentioned that, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. And on the YouTube channel. I yeah. think you've, pl- you've plugged it enough just by being you, yeah. you know? People okay. like you it. plugged it <laughs> enough, Charles. You've, ch- <laughs> you've plugged <laughs> it enough. We are five minutes in this podcast and you warned me that it's hot in here. <laughs> I am it's so hot. Yeah, it's so hot. So much. Well, do you want to open that door behind you? Well, we'll make noises. Yeah, it'll be fine. Well, if my kid comes home, I'll have to close it again because he'll come screaming in. Oh, that's, yeah, that's better. He might buy you. It's very still. There's no breeze. No, there's no breeze at all. That's right. Okay. We're in what is known as a tropical dead zone here. There's no air movement at all. No, it's amazing we can breathe. There's a limited amount of oxygen in here. We're going to pass. This is out like Saw a... Seven or yeah, something. Like, exactly. exactly yeah. Yeah. Podcast till one of you dies. <laughs> all right. So we got some first reactions for Captain Marvel. You know, they, the the very the very very early screenings where a select handful of critics get to go in and tell everyone how wonderful a thing is. How do they select these critics? Because we've never been selected. Uh, it's mostly an LA thing, I I, I think. They so could fly, they're not going to. <laughs> Why would they? Yeah, for us to come out and go, yeah. yeah. Charlie, okay. you've, you've lived in LA from time to time. Yes. Have they ever selected you as a critic? No, not at all. It's not something that they mm. hand out willy-nilly. Do you take these things seriously, though? Because like, I know a lot of early screenings. For I remember when Fantastic Four, the latest one, came out. When the, Batman versus Superman, yeah, didn't that yeah, get like a standing, standing ovation? Exactly, or something? Yeah. yeah. And Fantastic Four, people were like, it's better than you'd, you'd be surprised. It's pretty... No, it was my... Because no, that's the thing. I think I would also... I'm very easily swayed by a... A free hat, yeah, or, yeah. A, or oh, just yeah. a just or a, a kind cr- word, a kind a free hat or a kind word. I used to review like years ago. I used to review movies, and I would get invited to those screenings that you guys sometimes go to, the media ones. Yeah, and it used to crack me up because I'd see like reviewers from major publications there. And you see a Lee Patch, yeah, yeah, yeah or Jim Shembury, <laughs> and Jim in particular would turn up wearing all the merch he'd been sent. He had his oh, like Independence goodness. Day jacket with his Boogie Nights hat, you know, <laughs> tucked into his Aaron Brockovich t-shirt. Wow. Like, Is he doing it ironically? No, I think he genuinely was like, awesome, I never have to buy war choices. Yeah, yeah. Like, those were all the clothes that he had, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, some of the highlights for this, though, apparently there's some twists and turns along the way. Brie Larson's apparently very good. And the cat. People are like, the cat's great. Because something's up with that cat, apparently. But uh, It's but, great. It's great. What's up and with Mendo. The cat. I've re- been reading that Mendo is yeah. like one of the better Marvel villains. Good, yeah. I'm sure that there'll probably be some to twist on. Is he a good guy or who's a skull and who's a bad guy and whatever? Right. And who's a Cree and who's a good Cree and what's what? You know, so all of those things. It's next week or week after? Is it next it's week? It's the 7th for us, seventh, so, yeah, so two weeks. It's just snuck, a, snuck right up on us. Yeah. I don't know anything about Captain Marvel. Yeah. Like, I don't know who... The, I know I understand it was a guy once and then it's a girl and yeah. it's like she's super powerful and stuff. But I'm just like... I tried to... I watched a couple of your videos of like, I don't know. It's too hard. I feel like I have to check out at some point. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a very kind of complicated history of, and they seem to be wiping a lot of that away. So I think I don't think you're going to go in and go, what's happening? I don't understand this. I didn't read everything ever. Yeah. So I think it's going to be yeah pretty accessible. Yeah. Do you feel that, Charlie? Is that because you... Do, are you feeling tired? Are you, are you superhero fatigued? Superhero fatigued, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got a bit of superhero lethargy. Not quite have, at fatigue yet. Yeah, right. Do you have a breaking point where you're like, I'm not seeing Spider-Man? Um, or, or I this? think... I mean, the, with the Marvel films, I think you can pick and choose. Like, I really liked... Uh, Infinity War mm-hmm. is that what it was that was yes. it called I yeah, really right. think yeah. it was like <laughs> Infinity Gauntlet Infinity War I, I really like that but you know I mean some of the Ant-Mans and stuff I didn't love that you're like, either, yeah, yeah whatever awesome. I can yeah. I can let that pass I mean the DC films I gotta say I really enjoyed Aquaman there we go mm. it was one of those things where it was so ridiculous yeah. like I mean my wife and I laughed the whole way through it it felt like it was like Flash Gordon or something and I'm like yes, well maybe yeah. that's DC's way back in let's just go super ridiculous yeah mm. right uh-huh. like just go back to the cheesy kind of like 60s comics and just go more and more bizarre and, well, and yeah. more well weird. apparently and we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago they're, they're pivoting to just movies 
about just movies. weird marine any life. Movies. Yeah, just any movies. Oh, you're talking about that spin off. They're the going to spin it yeah. off what? into the, the trench. You know, you know in the movie, bit? they go into the trench. Yeah. They go into the, and it's just weird piranha man. That they're going to do a sequel. Is that true? Apparently, yeah, apparently, yeah. yeah. Well, it's all it's on the DC slate. So but yeah, right. On the, but isn't there, on there like a DC Justice slate, League yeah. Dark on the slate? Yeah, and there's there is, all kinds yeah. of uh-huh. Shazam, no, what Black Adam movie and yeah. stuff. There's all yeah, the rocks I don't, involved. I don't buy for a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think though, if if anything would get off the ground, it'd be that because Aquaman is now the most successful DC. I mean, who would have thought ever? Yeah. I know, like, right? right? Such a James Cameron wouldn't have thought. Vinny Chase, he's not. Did we talk about that? James Cameron is not. Oh, yeah, he didn't like it. He didn't it like it. What was the figure that Aquaman made in Entourage World? Because didn't oh, wasn't there an episode where they opened like yeah. you oh, know yeah. variety and it's like one billion blah blah blah? Did it actually beat the fictional tally? It beat the opening weekend of Spider Man, but I don't think I don't know if we have got the the overall numbers because right. I don't think there were many billion dollar movies back then. Oh no, but the question is no is, I, in did, Entourage. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. One of the episodes yeah. I remember they opened. Oh, like so a, after the Aquaman episode. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there was yeah. An, later on where it's like this film grows like a I'll billion. I'll have a look if you it's want. It's exciting. I mean, this is live <laughs> results. Yeah, that, that'd be inter- because the the in Entourage, the the figure, like it, it goes past their wildest dreams. It's mm. the biggest blockbuster ever. I'd be interested to know if the real life box office beat the fake box office. Yeah. And James, go. if you could also open up an inflation calculator and adjust <laughs> it for whatever year that episode of Entourage came out and just make sure. I'm at entourage.fandom.com slash wiki slash Aquaman mm-hmm. and they've only got the opening weekend which is 116 million uh, right. in the US but there's no follow-up numbers. But you're probably right. It's probably mentioned and someone down at entourage.fandom.com slash wiki slash Aquaman hasn't updated Who it. Who is maintaining <laughs> that site? I mean, what are you doing when you're... Yeah. Maintaining an entourage wiki site. Absolutely. That's a, good, that's a very good question. It's probably one of the cast. I bet you it's <laughs> yeah. Johnny Drama. It's right. definitely Johnny Drama, <laughs> who's probably changed his name in real life. To Johnny Drama, yeah. Did, would, would anybody here yes. of the three of us yes. yeah. like Space Jam when that came out? No, it was terrible when it came out. I you, can't believe the, were, people, the affection people have for it. I think it's because... Of, uh, oh, maybe I was too old. I was in high school. Yeah. I was, was I in high school? Maybe I was older than high school. I took Michael Chamberlain, comedian Michael Chamberlain. Mm, I know Chamber. I took him to see it. Yeah. And he was so angry at me afterwards <laughs> that we'd gone to see Space I don't Jam. think he's ever let go of that anger. No. <laughs> so that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh-huh. yeah. uh, that was, do you remember though, everybody had worn a, like those cartoon board shorts. Yeah. Like if you watched boxes. the footy show back in the day, everyone would wear like a Looney Tunes tie <laughs> yeah, on right. the panel. Uh-huh. Those were the That's days. what kept them afloat for yeah. many years is novelty boxes. Silky boxer shorts with Sylvester the Cat on them. <laughs> yeah, with the Tweety Bird. Yeah. Silky there, was, boxes. there was definitely that Warner Brothers cartoon renaissance in the 90s. And it's Yeah. And then they did. And then they had the Warner Brothers stores too. Yes, they did. Yeah, there was, one in, was there one at Crown? Yeah, it was, there was. Yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not a great movie, but it's fondly remembered. Anyway, it's getting a sequel. 2021. Bill Murray back? Good question, probably. <laughs> or may, who has his number? Because you, you know that story with yeah, Bill Yeah, voicemail. Yeah, you leave him a message. Yeah, I, I guess it's time. Yeah. It? <laughs> it's time, like that's, the Kraken. That's, that's at least the Murray. <laughs> Again, that's what it says on the poster. I guess it's time, question yeah. mark. We're doing this. Yeah, and it's yeah. not Michael Jordan, it's LeBron. Yeah, it's LeBron, LeBron, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also it come, the week before Indiana Jones 5 comes out and the week after. Mission, what? Mission Is Impossible. that happening? Yeah, oh yeah. And the week after Mission Impossible 7. Is Sheila Booth back? No. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I can't confirm that, but but no. Is right. Mutt back? The character Mutt back? That's his character. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are they going to recast Mutt? I hope, I hope not. Because, okay. I mean, you know, you've got to stick to that continuity. Because do we still know, is it... 60s? Or was it 60s last time? Or was it, have it, 50s? To be the, it was the 50s last time. So it would have yeah. to be at least the 60s. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what's he doing? He's fighting hippies. He's, <laughs> He's just chasing <laughs> hippies off his lawn, long-haired yeah. hippies. He's working for Nixon. Yeah. He's, chasing, <laughs> he's chasing hippies off his lawn. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess because I know the fifth, they did the 50s and they did Aliens because there was that era of movies and there was a lot uh-huh. of that UFO shit going on. So, so what, 60s. what the 60s is... Is, is hippies, isn't it? Reef of Madness, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Beatles. It's full, uh, yeah. Psychedelia. A hippie steals some sort of priceless artifact, takes it to Woodstock, and it's just him laying, just, it's just uh, yeah. him cutting a swath. It's him through. fighting Hell's Angels at Woodstock because yes. he's, he's taken some bad acid. Yes, wow. <laughs> having a really bad trip. I um, want to get a sequel that's Woodstock 99, where he goes back. And he fights Limp Biscuit. He fights Limp Biscuit, yeah. <laughs> he fights Limp Biscuit. <laughs> But yeah, oh, okay. Are you excited for Indiana Jones then? Seeing as we're on it, no, no yeah, not really. Mm. No, I mean, maybe yeah. I would be. I, 
I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, you can't reboot anything. I'd be interested to see if they did like, you know, mm. cast a younger actor like Star Trek it and sort of yeah. do like, you know, young Indiana Jones and not mm. young Indiana, Indiana Jones, but a different <laughs> yeah. Indiana Jones, Chris Pratt or whatever they talked yeah. about. I'd be interested in that, but I don't want to see Harrison Ford, you know. Hump hobbling just, about. Yeah, it's just, I mean, put him in a mentor role. Yeah. Batman mm. Beyond it. Well, I know? had a, I went on movie fights and I pitched bring back Short Round as an adult. And make him great relate. idea, yeah, and get like Stephen Yeun from like The Walking Dead or someone like that, yeah. And I think he could carry a movie, yeah. And also, I won that round of movie fights just to clarify <laughs> if anybody was curious. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, well, I came this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, do you want to see it? Yes. Okay. Just but in, in what form? I don't know. <laughs> don't it's, I mean, it's not going to be great. I think it'll be okay at best, though, right? Well, now I don't want to see it. Uh, I remember when Crystal Skull came out. I was in LA at the time, and I was, when all the billboards came up, I got really, really excited. Yeah. And then when the film got released, I was like, oh, I'll wait till it comes out on <laughs> DVD. Yeah. I won't rush yeah. out and see it. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Just yeah. play the theme song. Just that John Williams theme is yeah. enough for you, you to go. Yeah. That's all you need. Uh, it's got Batman rumors of the Batman. Uh, apparently, they're looking for someone in their late 20s. So we're all out. Oh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> Army Hammer is that? That's what I read yeah, recently. Yeah, Army Hammer and Rob Patterson are the names that have been who? Is uh, that the Twilight, vampire? Twilight Man. Yeah. Right, Twilight who's Man. a good actor outside of? Those yeah, films. I think he, yeah. he'd be mm. all right. Yeah, how old is Army Hammer? He'd have to be like thirty-four, wouldn't he? I don't know. Well, he's yeah. out. Yeah, he's <laughs> enormous. Yeah, he's, again, he's, another LA story. Oh, yes, uh, oh he's, here we go. He's, like six, he used to six. work out. He used to work out at my gym, and mm. uh-huh. the dude he's not just tall, but like he looks like he could be like a professional athlete. He's yeah noticeably enormous 196 <laughs> centimeters so what's, what's that, that like in the old money five? that's like six five yeah yeah. Mm. yeah he looks yeah he's he's a very impressive physical yeah. specimen Did you but to maybe him? too big to be i <laughs> mean if you're that man. big too oh. big to fail what yeah. are we talking about what am i doing <laughs> i don't know but i mean if you're trying to like maintain a secret identity how many six foot five guys exactly mm, yeah are there it's uh-huh. like clearly bruce wayne and Batman. <laughs> yeah <laughs> two of the most enormous people in gotham city and then i guess do you keep well henry cavill they've worked together and they're about He's, Henry Cavill's a bit shorter though, isn't he? Than, I don't know. Uh, yeah, because they're in that movie where they're spies or whatever together. Do you ever do that thing where the you, can, you can look up it? celebrity heights online and they'll do like a, a chart and they'll show you like what different celebrities look like. Ranked. I've it's seen like Danny DeVito <laughs> up to yeah. Army Hammer. Yeah, right, like, uh-huh. It's amazing. Uh-huh. <laughs> How many Danny DeVitos are there to an Army Hammer? Three. Three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> three DeVitos. Three DeVitos to a Hammer. You're three DeVitos tall. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I don't think we're going to get any casting news on this anytime soon because Affleck just left. So I think they're going to let that kind of settle and get... I saw him on like Jimmy Kimmel or something or or maybe it was Seth Meyers or something and he was like wishing the new Batman well. It's like, you are not really wishing them well. (laughs) You're just so glad to be out of it. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely he is. Well, he... He He just looks tired. Yeah. He does look tired. He he released a statement recently where he was like, okay, we took a shot at the script and we... You know, we we really worked hard on it, and then we met some great people, and he was very much like handing it off, like mm. very much like, and 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 we we brought in some great script writers, and they're gonna they're gonna work on this next version of this script, and felt very much like he was like sounds uh, like an office manager quitting his job, talking to his staff, yep, not wanting to burn any bridges, yeah, yeah right. But you know, he really hated the job, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. he's been offered a much better gig somewhere else, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But for Affleck, it's just punching darts at home. That's yeah. that's what he wants to do, yeah. Mason, you love Ghostbusters. You'll I never do. stop loving it. You love every movie and every incarnation, correct? None of that's correct, but continue. Here we go. Uh, the director of the new Ghostbusters, uh, Jason Reitman? Jason, Jason Reitman. The son of Ivan Reitman, who did the first two. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got in trouble this week because he said, he, he mentioned about this new one. Uh, we're in every way trying to go back to the original technique and hand the movie back to the fans. So a lot of people took that as, you hate the last one that came <sighs> out and all those kinds of things, which I don't think was his intention. <laughs> He apologized for it. I yeah. couldn't believe it. It was like, that's mm. clearly a statement that could be interpreted in a number of different yeah. ways. Yeah, right. uh-huh. Because he didn't, he also, he clearly didn't say, and I hated that one. And yeah. I'm going to fix it. I think he just meant, we're just doing a sequel to the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not bad to say um, we're going to be servicing the fans. Mm. Like, I think that's what yeah. you would want to say. I mean, say. unless you got too specific. If you were like, we're going to individually service every <laughs> fan yeah. as they enter the theater. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but he, yeah, but as you said, uh, I have nothing but admiration for Paul and Leslie and Kate and et cetera, et cetera. And the bravery of Ghostbusters and they expand to the universe and whatever. Also, those stories are crossed over in the comics, aren't they? They've crossed dimensions. I think possibly, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, um, I'm not going anywhere with this. Why? Why? It's going to save me. Yeah. <laughs> you looked at me and I was like, I had nothing. No, no, no that's right. Not like a challenge. You finish your sentence. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
But why I I I'm, I always get so confused why people are so hung up on continuity, like especially yeah, right. people who come from like if comic book fans or, or you know like genre fans, because continuity changes all the time. A new uh-huh. a new writer comes in, a new artist comes yeah. in. They change things up. Why do people like, no, it must link up? Who cares? Mm. Like everyone have lots of different cracks. That's just like, you know, yeah. if they're good filmmakers, who cares? Yeah. If, I don't yeah. know. I think is it is it this, there's a certain amount of internet discourse where people go, oh my God, what if in the next one, this happens and then this happens? And what about, remember in the original, they did this. What about a callback to this? And then they sort of, everybody builds a image in their mind of what the new one's going to be. Mm. This is, it's very, very much Star Wars syndrome. Yeah. Where, and then, the director takes it in the you know the wrong direction, and they go. But what about they were going to put this from the first one into the new one? Yeah. And it's kind of like, no, yeah. they weren't. There was never any promises made. There was of. never, yeah. Yeah. you know, short round was never going to come back. Exactly. And be, well, like... he should, and yeah. I won that movie fight. So, <laughs> what else do you want? Yeah, <laughs> you're going to be referenced when Indiana Jones five, six, whatever it is, comes out. People are going to be like, but James said in his movie fight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm downvoting this movie. Exactly. Uh, also, apparently he's looking for a pair of uh, brother and sister combo in the 12 to 17 year old range. So that's the, the idea. That rolls out. Uh, uh, so we, oh man, right we keep again. missing out this yeah, country. Right. Can't play Batman, yep. can't win your Ghostbusters. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Guys, uh, hear me out. Mm-hmm. We put our shoes on our knees. <laughs> We tiptoes it. We tiptoes it, exactly. Yeah. Are you familiar with the movie Tiptoes? <laughs> no. The uh, Where Gary Oldman plays a dwarf. And he's dwarf? A, he's a brother of... Do you normally pronounce dwarf. the W? No. What did I no, say? He, he does dwarf. it. D- dwarf. dwarf. I've never dwarf. called... You said dwarf. dwarf. I've never like called... Like Dwayne Johnson. Like Red Dwarf. I've never Rock called dwarf. him on it publicly, but I think now is the time to do <laughs> dwarf it. The this Rock is an Wait a <laughs> You say dwarf funny, James. Dwarf. I say dwarf. Dwarf or dwarf? No, you didn't say that the first time. Let's go to the tape. Okay, look... Fine, I said it, but the point is, there's a movie. <laughs> He's going to cut it out of the. Edit. I'm not going to cut, cut it out. The pause out in the edit. I'm in a, I'm in a double down where Gary Oldman plays a dwarf. Thank you. Where he puts his shoes on his knees and he's the brother of Matthew McConaughey. It's like a. It's from the early 2000s. It's insane. You should watch the trailer. For okay. Tip-toes. Yeah. yeah. Should, should I let the dog in? in? Please yeah, let, let the dog, dog in. <laughs> <laughs> Normally yeah, Mason lets the dog in, but yeah, she'll definitely attack you. No, she's very friendly. All right. She's got a friendly There's smile a, and a yeah, friendly I attitude. Do you want to kind of touch it? All right, don't bite me. <laughs> Alright, mind your chair. Mind the dog's chair. No, yeah, that's right. That's, yeah. What that's the dog's microphone as well, shall we? So, yeah. Never says anything, but maybe one day. Yeah, opinions she's, on Ghostbusters. She's like the singing frog. We're hoping one day she'll say something on mic, but she never will. Anyway, tiptoes. Yeah, tiptoes. Anyway, uh, watch the trailer. It's an insane movie made by. An so what I'm person. saying is, shoes on the feet, mm. uh, shoes shoes on the knees. Uh, we get ourselves a couple of big wobbly pops. Yeah. Backwards. And they'll never know. Hat with the propeller. We're Thank just whittle boys. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's just some whittle boys. We just boy, we ghost busters. Getting arrested on the set of Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yes. I don't think this is this idea is gonna necessarily I don't think anyone's gonna be pleased from another Ghostbusters. I think people you're going to get people who like the 2016 one upset. You, uh, you've got to get people who don't like it as a sequel going to be upset. I just think it's it's a lose-lose and we have to endure more Ghostbusters. <laughs> the, the first one's not that good. I know you love it. I, I'm a big fan of the Ghostbusters. I like the mythology of Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah right. Uh-huh. I'm a big fan of the original one. I don't mind the second one. Like it's, it's, I like the second one, actually. I've said that before. Yeah, before. But I, I, mm. I, I do like that universe. I do. I mean, I'm not... I tried to watch the... The reboot, but mm. I just was—I just wasn't into it. Like, yeah. I just—I didn't like the special effects. I just, yeah, sort of, that's everything it, felt a bit neon. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. I like I, yeah. I liked it for the most part, but yeah, you're right. I, I, what I like, one of the things I like about the original one is it's set in this just dirty, awful New York, just yeah. this grimy thing, and the new one is so clean and green screen, and yeah. it feels like they're on a set, which obviously, you know, it's a, obviously they are. It's a movie, but. Mm. You know, it, it feels like a New York film. Yeah, it like does. It's yeah. very much yeah, of the yeah. city. Whereas the first one, they feel like just pest exterminators in New York, which yeah. I like a lot. But, yeah. you know. Fair that much. must be some kind of cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> what a film. What an era. Yeah. Uh, this news is just for you, Charlie. I don't okay. know if I were to put this in normally, but Hulk Hogan is getting a <laughs> biopic or biopic yes. or dwarf. Uh, with Chris Hemsworth, but I yeah, think. that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, Todd Net- Phillips as well. Net- Netflix, right? Oh, I didn't see that part. I, I, that. I okay, believe yeah. it's a Netflix series. Okay. Yeah, that is interesting. I it's mean, a series. What? No, no. Series. Is it a series? I don't know. No, no. you said series. Did I say that? I didn't say series. Did you I say didn't... series? Can we go to the go to the tape. <laughs> go to the tape. <laughs> Dog, did you say something? Was that your first? Do word? not misspeak <laughs> yeah. on this podcast. You'll be held James, to account. James, you said it was a Netflix series, so we're going to go with that. 
Yeah. You're, you're a, you love wrestling, yeah? Yeah, I've, get, I've gotten back into wrestling yeah. of late, which is, uh, I, it was unexpected, but um, a friend of mine gave me his WWE account where you can, you know, yep, go into uh-huh. the network. And oh, yeah. I started watching it and I just got sucked back into it. I just, it is so, I mean, I love watching people do death-defying stuff because, you know, yeah, right, I would uh-huh. ne- that I would never do myself, but... I just do love the storylines. Like I love the the high drama, the soap proper of it. I actually went and saw some wrestling in Sydney a couple of weeks ago. For I took my wife for Valentine's Day. We went <laughs> nice. and saw some professional wrestling, and it was great because these guys. That's actually, the second piece of news just for you. Your wife's leaving here. Yeah. <laughs> they married together like comedy and wrestling. So at one point there was a, that one of the wrestlers. His gimmick was he was the Cupid, and so he's going mm. around the little bow and arrow. And he shot the two guys he was wrestling against and they got in the middle of the ring and they started making out yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the ring. It was great. So I hope that happens yeah. in the Hulk Hogan Netflix special. Well, Hulk Hogan has a bit of... If, for what do, hardcore what you, wrestling what fans... What do you cover for him though? Because there's been some recent stuff that's like... Fwee. You don't go that far. And yeah. I believe he's a, an EP on it. So I yeah. doubt they'll get into that. But mm. people have mixed feelings about Hulk Hogan in professional wrestling. Why is that? Because although he was this kind of like huge figure in the eighties, he was a face of it. Like people feel that maybe he kept other wrestlers down, that it was very much, uh, he, he whitewashes his own history. Like he doesn't, he was famous for not giving up and coming guys a shot. Like when he would move from different organizations from WWE to the WCW, for instance, he was, he would never lose matches, for instance. Like, yeah, right. It's a give and take. It's like being the most, you know, like being the star of a show or the star yeah. of a movie and just sort of pulling pull rank all the time. Okay. So I did read a bunch of things online from wrestling fans saying this will not be like, you know, a, an honest biopic. Yeah. This will be yeah. very much a kind I of I think James piece. James and I both watched the same video this yes. week. I don't know if you've seen this, Charlie. Well, not his sex tape. <laughs> yeah, <he's>, <laughs> we <laughs> both watched this sex tape. For the show, Charlie. There um, is a really odd moment, because I have seen the sex tape, where he's sitting on the edge <laughs> of the bed. Well, forget and, what I was going to say. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. And he's talking about like feeling like he's after he's had sex, presumably, because he's sitting on the bed with and he's Bubba holding his lo- stomach and he's Bubba complaining. With love sponge his wife? Yes. Is that? Okay, all right. And he's complaining about, oh... I feel so bloated. I ate way too much sushi. <laughs> it's like, Hulk, that is some terrible pillow. Yeah, that, no, that's Hulk good to stuff. just complain about yeah. how bloated you feel. <laughs> Great. But I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe that's what people are after these days. I mean, there's so many sex tapes now. People are like, I'm sick of the sex. I want, some I real. Yeah. I want exactly. Someone complaining about yeah. gas. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Amazing. So, yeah, I, what you were saying, though, that. I was going to say, yeah. we, we, watched a, we both watched a video about. Uh, why music biopics are always so formulaic because it's mm. always like because it's you know it's That's obviously the Jewy uh, the walk hard it's, it's the, walk hard, exactly exactly what it's, it's the situation yeah. you know walk hard so perfectly skewed it because it's like you see, you see a character and they're at the twilight of their career and then mm. they have to before a big gig and then they think back to their childhood and then something tragic happened and then they develop some talent and they meet you know the their first, they meet they they yeah. meet a producer then they meet their first love and then the the producer sees they've got something and then they record something and then they cheat on their first wife and then there's mm. drugs and whatever and it, it's it's always exactly the same mm. and it's also usually the surviving members or the 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 estate or executive yeah. producers so you never get anything yeah i haven't seen bohemian rhapsody but that's why bohemian I, rhapsody yeah. is like just two hours of the band queen telling you that they're the band queen. Yeah, right, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. There's, it's like every scene. It's like, no way, man, because we're queen and our <laughs> lyrics will stay the way we want them. Yeah. You exactly. can't release a song that goes for six minutes. Well, listen, we're the band <laughs> queen. Yeah, yeah. And we believe songs can go for six minutes. <laughs> Queen, you are absolutely right. This is the number one on the charts now. A six-minute song. Who knew? We knew it because we're the band Queen. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen there's one hilarious shot where they sit down to meet the producer. And isn't there something in the contract where they each have to get equal screen time? So it just cuts to the different members just of Queen. Just nodding. Just pointlessly where they're like, that is true. Yeah. yeah. Good work, Brian, mate. You've yeah. done it again. We're Queen, yeah. yeah. So. But like, you know... and um, I mean, they've got the hair right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Like, um, straight out of Compton, Ice Cube produced yeah. that. And so, mm. you know... All the 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 CD stuff. Well, the In Excess Telly movie was uh-huh. one of the most shiny, uh, happy who was Telly the movies lady? about rock and roll I've ever seen. Like, I'm pretty sure like Michael Hutchins lived quite a, like a, a decadent lifestyle. But when you watched it, it was it was like it was 
I don't like a kids film. Or and at something the end, like he that. goes off to live so in a everyone farm. Everyone was smiling. You know? They're all smiling. <laughs> they're in they're in their van touring. You know, building up their 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 uh, when they were before they became in excess. Yeah. But they're all just so happy all the time. Everyone's smiling. I'm like, you're in a van, like five blokes. Surely it was got up to some <laughs> mischief. It can't have all been so nice. But again, who, those who played the dude? Luke Arnold, I believe, is the actor's you're name. You're forgetting the scene where they all they steal an apple pie off a window sill. Yeah, what? They run they're away scared. with it. <laughs> but there's even a scene they had the drug scene in the hotel room where they're doing coke yeah. but it was like they're throwing it in the air and laughing <laughs> coke's yeah, right. really it's, expensive yeah. it's really expensive <laughs> <laughs> what a waste but yeah so Hulk Hogan probably not going to be in, yeah. in any coke parties in, in the, in the no I mean it'd be interesting because he was right in the in the 80s they had the big steroid that was the big investigation right, yeah. that happened and clearly a man with a body like that oh, I don't exactly. think that uh-huh. happens Naturally, no. So, so wait, is there a rule in professional wrestling you're not allowed to use steroids, or was it a health thing? Oh, that's a good question, actually. You, I, I believe. Oh yeah, that makes sense because it's not a competitive sport, no. so no. you probably but, can. But use there's steroids. obviously dangers associated with some. Yeah, but, that was related but I mean, if your doctor prescribes you steroids, or yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. Let's uh, check. The, go to the tape. Go to the tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking forward to Chris Hemsworth shaving the entire top of his head. Yeah. That's all I want. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, if, you're, if you're Hulk Hogan, Terry Belia, I believe is his yes. real name, okay. you'd be quite stoked that Chris Hemsworth oh, is yeah, playing yeah, you. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Some There's revisionist pro- history there right might there. Even, there might even be a scene where he shaves his head on camera. He's like, well, look, I, I do have a full head of hair and will continue to have a full head of <laughs> yeah. hair, but WWF wants me to shave my head, so <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. I'll shave a bald patch in. <laughs> What male pattern baldness is in? All right, here we go. Uh, I look forward to the recreation of Suburban Commando. Oh yes. my God, yes, please. And the three kit, three ninjas, kid ninjas, whatever that one was. Uh, but to Ninja Mountain? That's Escape yeah, to Ninja Mountain? Yeah. yeah, great stuff. Actually, he wears a wig in that, which he takes off in the movie. Right. he's like, you know, so he embraces it. They should have put that in the, the whatever this What was his TV is. show called? Thunder, Thunder Alley? The cartoon? Yeah. No, it was a boat one. It's in Florida. Oh. He drove a speedboat. Of course he did. Night boat. Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was called Thunder Alley or Thunder Lake or Thunder River. Something with thunder in it. Yeah, that Great. sounds really good. Yeah. Man, they should reboot all of those. One, when I was a kid, there was one called The Highwayman. Oh, yeah. And it with had Jacko. Uh, Jacko was in it. So. Oh, yeah. And Sam Jones, yeah. Flash Gordon. Yeah, that's right. I feel thunder we, in Paradise. I, thunder I feel paradise. we may have talked about this in the show before, but there was, a sh- there was a show. It was called The Highwayman. And he was like a high-tech bounty hunter who lived in like a... Mad like a, Max. Yeah, was like it? a mobile home kind of thing. But it, was it post-apocalyptic or... I think it, it was just, just looked like Mad Max. It just looked like Mad Max. But it was just but, the current day. Yeah. Amazing. Was, I think it was just the current day and he was like super high tech. But his sidekick was played by Mark Jacko Jackson. It was a former rugby league... He's the Energizer guy. Yeah, Americans would know him yeah. as the Oi guy. Oi! Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he and he was the, his name was Jacko, but his character's name was Jetto. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite of those, right. I think, in the late eighties, early nineties, was a series called Renegade. I remember with Renegade. Lorenzo, Lorenzo Lamas, Lorenzo Lamas, yeah, Lamas who would ride a motorbike yeah. shirtless but with a leather vest on. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And his sidekick was a dude called Native American, American with Johnny yeah. Six Killer. Nice. <laughs> Real name? Real name? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, bring them all back. I say, team, that's a cinematic universe I would like to see. Bring Renegade. Back, put the Highwayman in Renegade yeah. and Thunder in Paradise. And yeah, like, Baywatch Nights. Oh, <laughs> I'm so excited. What's that one when My- Michael Lansbury was an angel or something? Highway to Heaven. Uh, yeah. Highway to Heaven. Yeah. Get him in. Yeah. He what did he, Landon. Landon. Michael Landon, Michael Landon yeah. yeah. Great hair. Great, yeah, really good hair. Amazing hair. All right. Uh, Bond 25 news. I'm ready. Apparently, it might potentially be called Shatterhand. Who's directing this? Not Danny Boyle. Not Danny Boyle. I, can't, I can look that up, but uh, yeah, I don't know at this point. And it's coming out. They're going to make it. It's going to be Carrie Ka- Fukunaga. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. He's a good director. He is a good director. So yeah, he did Beast of No Nation, Maniac, which I haven't seen, which you like. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. It. So there you go. No, no? he didn't know. He no, he was meant oh, to direct it. Oh, but he, he, he right. bailed because he said it was going to be too formulaic. Oh. And then it goes on to make $800 million. So he's <laughs> laughing now, Kerry. <laughs> I did True Detective as well. Oh, yeah, this yeah. guy's got great stuff. Okay, cool. Now he's Excellent. a very good director. And some Atlanta, yeah. is that him? Uh, made that up. I haven't got any. But how That's a really interesting Atlanta choice because he's quite subversive too. I'll be yeah, interested right. to see what he does with Bond. Yeah. yeah. Like, it'd be great if it's like a bit of True Detective, just like a nihilist. Well, Bond is kind of nihilistic, isn't he? This new one definitely yeah. is. Yeah. Just, just like a... existential crisis about drinking martinis and having yeah. sex with beautiful women. And all these brothers, all these villains are brothers and know each other or something. Yeah. <laughs> what happened in that last one? 
<laughs> it's not a bad name. Yeah. Shatterhand. Do you think yeah. it's a? Do you think the Shatterhand is a metaphor, or do you think it's just a guy with a big iron hand? I think. Yeah, I want to say that, big, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I want to be big Shatterhand. Because there's been there's been a dearth of those characters in in like the last one was Jaws. No, well, the last one was Diamond Face. Mm. Oh, Die yeah. another day, but yeah, we haven't really had any no. novelty. Can you, um, I'm not big on Bond, but I, I think I've seen the Daniel Craig. Can you remind me what are the Bond ones? So there's uh, Casino Royale, yep. uh, Quantum of Quantum Solace, Solace, Spectre, uh, the Skyfall first, Skyfall, and then and Spectre. Spectre. And what yeah. happened in Spectre? Is that the one with His brother um, was, was Blofeld. No, that was Skyfall. Oh, I haven't seen Spectre. Yeah, you don't need to. It's okay. fine. <laughs> There's a bit where they drill into his brain to remove his memories, and they do it, but he's, he's... all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they missed. So they missed. They missed all the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> they missed. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh. So, and it had the biggest explosion ever or something in it, didn't it? Like the biggest I believe technically it did have the biggest explosion, yeah. but I don't remember. Like it, it hasn't stuck in my memory yeah. as the biggest explosion. So where time. did we leave him at the end of Spectre? He left. He retired and got in a good relationship. Oh, hang on. No, but that's not where he goes back to Scotland and there's the shootout. No, that's Skyfall. Oh, that's Skyfall. Okay, right. So so he he uh, at meets the end a of, lady. At the end of the last one, he meets a lady and then he he goes off into the sunset. And I think the assumption is that the next one will be uh, sort of a remake of the movie on Her Majesty's Secret Service, which is where he gets married and then his wife's killed. I was going to say, yeah. like, as soon as you said he meets a lady, I'm like, well, she's dead. <laughs> yeah, that's but the right. thing is, they've done that. They've like, done they it, did exactly. It in Casino Royale. Royale and yeah. then he got better. He recovered. And he's yeah. like, I can love again. At what like, point well, you can't. do MI6 go, Bond, all these women keep dying around you. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're the one common denominator. We think maybe you're a suspect. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and anyway, I, heard, I heard Daniel Craig said he's not going to dye his hair for this one. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I, I respect that. <laughs> Don't I, Mason? You couldn't say that, but I pointed directly <laughs> pointed at James. At yeah. And his grey, grey hair. I cut it out, but there was a 10-minute pause where Charlie just pointed at me. <laughs> and we all we all laughed. <laughs> anyway, I'm looking forward to this. Yes, yeah, I I mean, I, I kind of want to read it at this point because it felt kind of done. And he felt very tired in the last one. And also yeah. he hates it because he yeah. tells everybody. Didn't he do like time. a press conference where he was like, this sucks, I hate everything. Yeah. But I think, you know, you do press and I'd imagine you do 40 interviews a day for three oh, weeks. Oh, God, I must yeah. suck. You yeah. make $30 million. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Good on I, him. I, I imagine what you could do is if you've got all the, the press interviews that get put up on YouTube, you could, if you wanted to, you could arrange them chronologically. Like you could figure out what we'll we'll <laughs> open, you know, here's the 9 a.m. interview and here's the... 5 p.m. <laughs> and then to see stubble grow. Yeah, yeah, just sweaty and angry. And oh, there's more cards for me to read improv suggestions of. Oh, this is very exciting. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, what breakfast radio team yeah. got a wacky question for me? God, good on him. Star Wars news, everyone, because there always is. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. awesome. Oh, actually, to- you, you might want to watch yeah. uh, Spectre just because uh, Dave Batista's in it. Is that this? Oh, yeah, he's in oh, yeah, I like I was thinking because he's got he's the henchman. He's got, he's got, did you? Were you pandering got, to because I'm a wrestling fan? Yes, You're exactly, like, hey, Charlie, what, he's a reference. No, I just remember you listen up, Charlie. Because I was, I was saying about how we've run out of weird villains in in Bond. With the he would be. Yeah. He's, got well, he's, steel he's got steel thumbs, oh, but he, nothing ever happens. Well, he can hitchhike really well. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, he pulls out a guy's eyes, but you don't really see it. I think no, he's just got steel thumbs, and it's never referred to. Yeah, there's a pretty decent fight between him and Daniel Craig on a train. Memory. That's true, yeah. And there's that biggest explosion, maybe. Oh yeah, we, <laughs> so, yeah. All right, cool. That's good. Yeah. So, where where, where are you on Star Wars? Uh, look, I'm not really a Star Wars. I like the old, the original trilogy. Sure. Uh, four, what is it? Four to six. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, like everyone. Um, and then I was not a huge fan of Force Awakens, and I really like the Last Jedi, which yep. I think shows how far off no, no, well, being a Star Wars fan I am. Camp though. Oh really? Yeah. And oh, yeah. therefore, our yeah. opinion means nothing. I was actually overseas when it came out, and I was traveling a lot, so I didn't really uh, pick up. I was in, I think, it was in Amsterdam when I went and saw it, mm. and I came out going, "Oh, that was really great because it felt so different." Like we were talking about before, where you get someone a he different director drugs. or a writer. <laughs> he was on drugs when he watched it, James. <laughs> Drugs. I don't want a drugs person in the podcast. It's okay, you can't hear this. <laughs> don't want a drugs person. It's okay. When I had the drugs, I just threw it in the air. And oh, okay, good, 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 good. Oh, good. oh you had a drugs party. I'm okay, the actor right. Charlie Clausen. <laughs> but there was no, because I was, there was no like talk of it being this kind of like SJW, like, yeah, right, piece, right. whatever. So I just went and saw a movie yeah. and came out and going, oh, that was unexpected. Like, I was yeah. expecting. Luke's going to be this badass, you know, you know, going to come yep. in the third act. He's going to like, do a flip. I love the idea that he's this dude who's like, you know what? Like in 50, 60 years of having the force and stuff, it sucks. Like yeah. you keep fighting and nothing happens. So I'm yeah. going to do something different. Having seen all the video essays since, I get 
why people are like, this is why it's yeah. inconsistent. This why it doesn't make sense. Yeah, but I don't give a shit about yeah. the universe enough to care. You I- know what's inconsistent? People. Yes. And isn't that yeah. what it's about? It's the, I, I'd say it's probably 50-50. So you've, you've right. angered half the people. If you had said the other thing, it wouldn't have mattered. So whatever you said, it wouldn't have... You're, you're probably still when you're talking about this, the Ghostbusters thing, it, you made me think, it's like, yeah, look, so many people hold these properties so dear to their heart. You, there's always going to be a significant portion of the audience who are going to be unhappy. You can't yeah, possibly exactly tick it, yeah. every box. And I think it's also... I mean, the, they bring in these directors who have like a style and a vision and stuff. Mm. And you, you don't want them just to sort of do that Marvel thing where it's like our way or the highway. Yeah, you want yeah, them right. to come in and bring uh-huh. a bit of their, their mm. point of view or their... And so I don't... I don't what what do you want? Do you want like a film designed by algorithm? Sounds like they do. Yeah. <laughs> Some people do. Yeah, yeah. And that that's yeah. that might be coming. I mean, yeah, you know, oh, definitely. Did you see? Did you guys see that thing? Like, there's now a website we can just click and it generates a person for you. Like it 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 algorithmically designs like a so creates weird. a like and a like very... a deep fake person. I saw for the you. AI newsreader in China. Yeah, he's right. Is a weatherman, and I could not tell that he was yeah. not because I'm racist <laughs> no, okay. I could not tell that he was like CGI <laughs> uh, maybe I'm a little racist but <laughs> no it was it was it was scary and that I mean that's just gonna I, I think about you know what I do for a living and like oh my days are numbered like for sure yeah, they're right, gonna uh-huh. I mean they're just gonna start reviving Marlon Brando but and stuff and yeah. CGIing him and putting him in things care like I don't want that I want to see people I don't need to see but Marlon what if Brando you can't again? tell though but what if you won't you can't tell you like can't. that movie Simone with Al Pacino <laughs> yeah good point but also Brando was a prick I don't want to see him again I'm glad he's dead yeah. but, but no I I don't know I, I really hope it doesn't go that way because like, it'll eventually be flawless. Did you see Rogue One where they brought back Peter Cushing, the Star Wars movie? That didn't seem flawless to no, me. That seemed not. nightmarish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a corpse walking yeah. around. But I don't know. I, I think I'm hoping that people will go, we don't need this because we have, you know, real people. <laughs> yeah. Real yeah, right. People. Well, yeah. All, there's always going to be something missing. Yeah. So. Mm. Well, I went and saw um, Battle Angel Alita oh, yeah. last week oh, in yeah, preparation right. to do your show. <laughs> yeah. and then, oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I got cancelled. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but I was looking at. I mean, because the integration of live action and CGI and that was pretty... Yeah. Did you see it in 3D? No. no. It's actually... that's I very rarely go to see 3D. I just don't like the sensation of it. But uh-huh. that was one film that's like, oh, I bet this would have been better in 3D in terms uh-huh. of the layering of yeah. real life components and CGI. But it did make me think, well, it's motion capture at the moment and we're mm-hmm. getting these really realistic, photorealistic CGI characters. But pretty soon... They'll have recorded enough actors doing enough things. Yeah, they right, won't need uh-huh. motion capture. They'll just go yeah, yeah. to their archive of movements. And yeah. I mean, that newsreader, that Chinese newsreader, I think that's all he is, is they just got someone to read a bunch of news yep. and they've just copied his gestures and facial tics and voice patterns. And now you can just pump in whatever propaganda yeah, right, you want. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, that's the thing is you watch it and like, he's going to start talking about weather, but then he's going to start talking about the groups in society we need to eliminate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. And yeah. after you've done that, enjoy some Cheetos. Yeah. <laughs> well, Charlie, have you considered getting giant eye surgery? Uh, yes. Mm. Yes. Okay, uh, good. I did, did they, they explain why she has big eyes? She did look like that in there. But is it know. like an advantage to that range of androids to have big eyes? But other people in that anime and manga ha- also have looked like that. But in the movie, it's just her. That's just her. Her and the other, whatever, T-800s, whatever they are. The other super soldiers, I think. No, I mean, like, other characters. Who? What other characters? No, no, so, in the anime. Oh, yeah. Other characters. Yeah, they all have the big eyes. But I just kept waiting for an explanation. Yeah, right. That no one brings up, hey, your android friend has really alarming big eyes. (laughs) Like, I thought it was going to be, oh, she can see at night. Or, you know, she's Uh going to pitch black it or something. Okay, yeah, sure, Mm. yeah. No. But they didn't. Maybe there is. Maybe there, there probably is a very complex. And did they downsize the eyes from the first trailer to what we saw? Because I feel like you, I feel there was some. Like tweak- did, I feel yeah? like there's some mm. tweaking. Definitely went on because it was a little unnerving. And it, and it, I don't know if it was just we went in. I think maybe we went in expecting dinner plate eyes, and then we it it, it wasn't as bad, and we settled in. But maybe I think also maybe they tweaked it a little because they were horrifying. We we have the theory that James Cameron can't perceive the uncanny valley. Because right. nobody looks him in the eye, yeah. so he can't <laughs> tell ah, if CGI. Is, it, 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 he can't tell if CGI is so close to being human, but it is inhuman that throws people off. Like so, he he doesn't know. I watched Avatar recently and was surprised by how well that's hold up the yes. CGI in that. Yeah. Like that's still by far and away the best motion capture, even better than like the Lord of the Rings stuff. Sure, I reckon. Yeah. 
<clears throat> Which I does that mean he owns it? I mean, I know where to do it, but does he own the tech for that? I know he developed it independently for years leading up. So he probably... Wait, does that guy ever sleep when he's not in bloody <laughs> submarines and developing? The submarine is his sleep time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the only way <laughs> you, he can get some you rest. Were talk, you started to talk about that earlier, how he didn't like Aquaman, but then you, something happened. We got derailed. Maybe I said dwarf. I think you probably, probably said well, he didn't like Aquaman because it wasn't realistic underwater stuff. Yeah, right. It's like, uh-huh. how come? How does he propel himself? Hang on, you said that or James Cameron said that? No, you were about to bring it up on this show. I was going to bring it back. Yeah. 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 I, look, we've all said a lot of things on this <laughs> podcast, all right? Some of which we stand by and some of which we can't remember we said. Yeah. But yeah, James Cameron didn't like. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> This guy. But he just said, because he's like, oh, so I've spent thousands of hours underwater. So I, you know, I, I know, know what, what it's it like. like yeah. Well, guess what, James Cameron? We haven't all spent thousands of hours <laughs> underwater. We're not all you, all right? Yeah. So it looked fine to me. Absolutely. Uh, okay, anyway, Star Wars news. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> That's where we were. Uh, there's rumors of these are the TV series we might be getting or might be in development, bearing in mind they're rumors. Uh, a young Princess Leia story. They think uh. they're talking that. Yeah. <laughs> where did she get? Where did she get her Those white robe? Where did she get the hairstyle? Yeah. You know, your hair would look a lot better like this, Princess Leia. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Woody Harrelson. <laughs> uh, so that the people are saying the Stranger Things girl would be a good young princess. Eleven. Yeah, but yeah. I don't want to see this. We, we, I mean, there's, like, there's probably like a dozen actresses who could do that, right? No doubt, mm. or a robot or whatever. Right. Chinese yeah. news anchor. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Captain Phasma story. Or maybe one of us on our knees with shoes strapped, oh, <laughs> shoes yes. strapped to them. Shoes on the knees, shoes on the side of the head. <laughs> uh, Captain Phasma with Gwendolyn Christie, which I okay. think could be interesting. Yeah. Because they, they, she doesn't get a lot of play in the in And the we movies. also don't even really know what Captain Phasma is. Yeah, there's a lot of backstory yeah, in the Yeah, she kind of died sort of... Yeah, twice. A proposed Do we, is, there, is there already a comic book that explains... Yes. Oh, okay. no, no. But there is a book that explains her origin and she's from a warrior planet. Is she, she's not a robot. No. But what she does in between Star Wars movies, the new ones, she goes off world to kill a resistance officer who knows that she's the one who let down the shields on Starkiller Base. Does any of that make sense, what I just said? Yeah, I mean, sure to yeah, someone. Yeah. Sure, yeah. So she goes, hunts this guy down. <laughs> okay, so right. That she doesn't reveal. That's not revealed. Uh, the Knights of Ren, who you may know as mm-hmm. something that's been mentioned in yep. the movies. No. Um, Rose Tico, her Kelly Mary Trans character. Uh, she's got a sister who Oh, she's embraced and... by the internet, right? The Beloved. Yeah, I love it. Beloved. Love her. Yeah, that's yeah. going to go well, yep. Yeah, but but she does have an interesting backstory with her sister because they, you know, they come from... Are they talking about making a spin-off for her? Yeah. Well, no, this is the rumor. But right. I, that's, again, I don't really want to see that. And Darth Bane, who's like an old Sith character. I mean, at this point, who is going to... Why would you do a Star Wars? Why would you direct one or act in one? Like, yeah. that's what I wonder. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, money and fame. I mean, money I and fame, I guess. But, like, I just think that, like, I mean, what's the... What's I can't the... believe Ryan Johnson's still on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Well, a ma- mate of mine is an Australian actor whose name is also Ryan Johnson, but R-Y-A-N. Uh, okay. He's on uh, Dr. Doctor, the Channel 9 oh, show. Oh, okay, yeah. But he still cops abuse from people I seeking bet, him out yeah. to say that he ruined Star Wars. Does his Twitter so bio just, say not, not, not Ryan the director, Johnson, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, oh, Send all hate here. Yeah. Oh, I know him. Is he the guy from the... Uh... No, he's not the guy from the Tim Tam ads, is he? Yeah. He is. He is. Okay, there you go. Right. Wow, well, that's like... great recall. Those are... Thank you. Close to 20 years. <laughs> yes. Wait, which Tim, which Tim Tam ads? The Remember genie. the genie? He's the genie. No, no, he's I the I got sent a lot of Vostok. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because the genie was also a rapper. Yeah. Recall. yeah. From 1200 Techniques. From 1200 yeah, Techniques. Yeah. 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 All right. What happened Good. All right, we know people. This is a very light... This is. There'll be about four people in the world who'll appreciate this episode. Link the Tim Tam ad Hello, I won't do it. Google oh, wow. it. Uh, but also eat a Tim Tam, everyone. If you've never eaten <laughs> they're one, they're very good. They're amazing. Mm. Um, but the big one was uh, when was the last time you had a Tim Tam, Charlie? You're too ripped to eat Tim Tams now. <laughs> uh, it's been a while, mate. You're it's a donuts been, guy, are you? I am a donuts yeah. guy. I had donuts last night. There you go. Mm. Um, and I, uh, I can't remember when I last time I had Tim Tam because they, they, there's all those flavors now. It's hard to yeah. choose. Yeah. Does anyone eat just a traditional Tim Tam? I'll anymore? do a, I'll do a double chock. Occasionally, <laughs> oh, is it the double coat. Yeah, double mean? coat. Yeah. 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 I think there's a Black Forest one. That That's was a the good last one. one I had. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jam in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'm into it. I'll go down that way. Yeah. Uh, but the last one that people are really excited about is the Obi Wan uh, spin off. That which sounds was, good. I'd yeah. watch that. Me too. Which was going to be a movie, though they never announced it. And it's Ewan McGregor it's Ewan too. McGregor. So his quality. He's hiding in the desert. What's he up to? Hiding, eating sand. And then, so I'd uh, pick up after episode three. Yeah, presuming like five to ten. Great. Years later. So it's literally could, cast away in the desert. Yeah, exactly. Right? But you could put in Joel Edgerton, who's yep. uh, who, Uncle Owen. Do you know him at all? Yes, a well, little is, bit. Is he nice? Yes. Is, can he do a flip? 
I don't know. God. Does it need to? Does Uncle Owen need to be <laughs> That's gymnastic? That's a good point, actually. <laughs> uh, a young, sprightly Uncle Owen needs would to do work, a flip. That would I mean, because how... Uh, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Like they've aged appropriately. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Well, they have to age you and up. No. Not really. He's no. probably, you could probably just say, yeah, he's 45. I well, mean, maybe a bit of grain is beard. Yeah, he's aged horribly. You can borrow some of your grain. He absolutely <laughs> can. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he waited. Yeah, he's in the desert for like 19 years. So you'd have to set it closer to the Ewan McGregor than the Alec Guinness because he aged horribly right. in that 20 years. And so you can have baby Luke as well. Yeah, baby Luke. Get Jake Lloyd's <sighs> kid <Please>. to play. <laughs> Luke, wouldn't that be amazing? Amazing. Uh-huh. It all comes full ruin, circle. Ruin two generations of people's lives by getting them involved in Star Wars. Get Jake Lloyd. Bassin it on the knees. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh. I want to see this and I hope they make it. That's the only one. Of all yep. those things you mentioned, it's the only one Same. that I seem vaguely interested in. I agree with you on that. Uh, last bit of news. Jessica Jones and The Punisher are officially cancelled. You right, mate? They, yes, I'm, I'm they, fine. they ripped the band Sorry, off. I was so surprised at the cancellation of Jessica Jones <laughs> and The Punisher. just threw something across the yeah. room. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm surprised they did both at once, but I because they kept cancelling them after every series. Yes. Oh. Right. And now they've gone. Okay, you know what? Let's let's forget this charade. Because Jessica Jones season three not out yet, but the Punisher season two. Yes. Just has, came just out. Just came out. Yeah, so, so yeah, Eminem's not happy. Yeah, I saw that for the show. No, yeah, it doesn't seem happy a lot of the time though. No, I've got to be honest. Yeah. I've listened to a lot of his music. He's uh-huh. very his beard on. Is he drawing his beard on now. What's he up to? Mm, I don't know. It's weird that yeah. beard. Yeah. Also with beards too. Like as three bearded gentlemen. Sure. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> like where, where do you where do you draw the line in terms of the bottom of the beard? It's hard. Like, yeah. Yeah, some I dudes agree. take it right up to the jaw, and I'm like, oh, that's a bit weird. You need yeah, yeah. Yeah. you need something yeah. underneath your chin. I don't yeah. take it too high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Nick, you're the expert. Yeah, tell us. Oh. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know, guys. I just <laughs> just have a beard. Yeah. I'm just using, it to, hide, I'm just using it to hide my adult acne, guys. I'd love so. to hear Eminem do a new diss track for you, just because yeah. you said something on this podcast. <laughs> uh, good on him. Apparently, there's some licensing thing. Like, it's very expensive for Netflix to license it. There's still... Some people are saying it was Netflix. Some people are saying it was Marvel that cancelled it or whatever. But who, who knows? Who knows? It's done. And we only have to endure one more of these, I guess. <laughs> not endure. Some are good, aren't they? Yeah, I like the first series of Daredevil. Mm. Maybe watch some, some parts of the second, and then I just kind of drifted off. I, I didn't watch really any of the other ones. I tried yeah. to watch Luke Cage first series. Like, uh-huh. oh, no, it all felt it very slow, padded. Right? Yeah, like yeah. I felt like you could have done six episode seasons. Being yeah, great. I, I think that what happened is that we were all so excited for, hey, it's Marvel TV on Netflix. We're going to get all these episodes at once. Isn't that so exciting? And then the first couple people liked a lot, and I think the the lesson they learned was just keep just shovel ep- just shovel thirteen episodes yeah. at I us think all it's the time. And streaming we just- TV in general, though, I think because the demand and and the way they make it, it, it seems to be there's a first season that's awesome seems to be easy. Yep. Yeah, but it's yeah. the follow-up season because mm. everything that I've been following up on, it's like Stranger Things 2 is a bit whatever. Sure, it's like, yeah. I think I don't know if it's the time frame they work in or is that all the good ideas are. Yeah, it's a difficult one, yeah. second album. And I yeah. think, I don't know, maybe there was more money in old, like traditional TV that they'd pour into development. We've got Daredevil or... to punch those guys in all the ways we could think of in the first <laughs> season. We've run out of ways for them to punch people. Can we kick? Oh, well, did they? So, they, uh, so they went back to the non costume in the third season, is that they right? They did, yes. 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 So I yeah. I wonder if that was a reaction to. Because that was so, what was so great was the anticipation of, mm. well, here comes the costume. Yeah, and that's then right. I kind of feel like the last episode of the first series was the worst episode. It's like, when he put the costume on, I'm like, this is dumb. <laughs> like, yeah, I really right. enjoyed it. Exactly. Right up until now. Because now he's they, bulletproof. Yeah. So what's they the... They tweak it for the... It looks better in the second, second one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's the mask in particular. It's yeah. kind of the eyes are too close or something. Yeah. Mason, can I tell you a story? It's an ad uh, story. It's, it's an ad and a story though. Well, look, I, I, I was not interested in one of your, another of your boring stories, but if it also contains an ad, <laughs> I'm ready to listen. Here we go. Once upon a time... In 2009, oh. two guys set out to make the perfect tea, a tea that felt like an old favourite from day one, perfectly broken in and absurdly soft. And their names were Mike and Adam. Mike. Oh. <laughs> no. Okay, do I have to remember these names? Because this seems like a kind of a long story I don't story know if it comes up again. I'm enjoying the fact that it's going to segue into an ad, yeah. so I'm happy for that. But don't make me... How many more names are you going <laughs> to give me, all right? I think those are all the names. We'll see. Okay. It took them about a year to nail the custom fabric, and once they did, they made their first batch of teas and bought the old VW bus to transport them. An old VW bus. Not the. The one... Rem- <laughs> they purchased the one remaining VW bus. Uh, nine years at a few credit cards and two buses later, they built a brand around those absurdly soft shirts. I'm, of course, talking about Marine Layer. 
They do Henleys, jackets, pants, sweaters. You get it. I've got a, a sweet as bloody flannel. I just saw it. It's, it's good. the most comfortable fl- shirt I've ever owned. Legitimately, it's so soft. It's like sleeping. In a comfortable shirt. Are you sleeping in that shirt? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Okay, then. Good. I'll, I'll take a nap. That's great. But yeah. I got myself because mm. they. You, what what happened with us also is that yeah. they because we're doing an ad for them. They said, "Here, have a little credit. Yeah. And you can go and you can buy some stuff. We both independently bought more stuff. Yes. Than they they were like, "You can have this amount. And we're like, "I'm oh, gonna get more. I'm gonna try some over, stuff. Yeah. I tried. I got a pair of jeans. Yep. Bought a pair of jeans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a tea. And I got a like a like a terry cloth sweatshirt. Oh, oh yes, man, very it's good. good stuff. That's good stuff. I got a raglan long sleeve tee. Got a tea raglan also. long sleeve yeah. tee. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm getting another one of those flannels. I'm gonna get one. I've got one in red. I'm gonna yeah. get one in blue. Right. Yeah. Mason, when we say that soft, we don't mean oh it's uh it's it's soft. I mean we mean that. Sure. But it's, it's crazy. We mean soft. when we say a word, we mean the literal definition of the word. But also another thing you're gonna say. Correct. These guys are ma- they're made from micro uh, modal. The Mike s- and Adam are made from micro modal. <laughs> no, no, no. I guess that makes. Oh made, my god, it makes sense now. It's micro modal because they're made from uh, the softest teas are made from the softest trees. Oh, yeah. Uh, recycled beech wood. So there you go. They've also got in between size, sizes. They like do. They have marge. Marge and, and larger for dudes who just don't conform to standards, which I think is really good. That's cool. Yeah. And their return policy is insanely good. You can pretty much uh, return anything up to a year. What? That's right. That's madness. And they what? Uh, plus, they offer free shipping and free returns of all US orders. I didn't look into returns because I want to keep my stuff. Agreed. That is, that's insanity. It, it's high quality. It's very soft. You know what I like about it? Yep. Is it all works together? Yes. Like as someone who has a lot of clothes, I'm often paralyzed by choice because I'm like, well, if I wear those pants, then I have to. I'm gonna have to find the different t-shirt. Where where is that? The shirt. With this, you can you could literally just go grab a. You could you could do it blindfolded. You grab mm. a pair of pants. You grab a tee. You grab a button-up shirt. Like without looking, and it all worked together, and it all looked good. That's what I normally do, anyways. But I was this time, I don't have to look like a fool doing it. Correct. People think I did it on purpose. Uh, we also we have a special offer offer offer. We have a special offer for listeners. Yes. It says it's required, but I'm happy to do it. All right. <laughs> Here we go. For 15% off your first order, which is oh, quite a yeah. lot, go to marinelayer.com, M-I-R-I-N-E-L-A-Y-E-R, and enter promo .com. code, yeah, and enter promo code PLANET at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, marinelayer.com, promo code PLANET. Please check it out. They're really good. Uh, no word of a lie. And if that's my guarantee and truth. <laughs> What's your truth? You can have breakfast for dinner if you want. That is true. No one can stop you. That's just your truth, though. That's true. It's Good. true. Okay, back to the show. Anyway, let's talk about a Netflix show that we all watched, probably. Yeah. Uh, right. Umbrella Academy. Imagine uh, the X Men, except the guy's in charge is a shit bloke. I guess. Mm. That's all. Oh, sorry, Mason. What do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. Oh, oh, come on, you. Oh, <laughs> so glad to see that live in person. <laughs> what, but I. Oh. It's everybody's favourite segment, Mason. It's not my favourite <laughs> okay, segment. Sorry, you never a... think about my feelings, do you? <laughs> Uh, all right, so what is the... Okay, so here, here we go, Charlie. Here we go. I'm going to do it live. I'm, I'm excited. Gonna, yeah, stop putting it off. I'm waiting. Here's the plot of the Umbrella Academy. Okay, so 1989. Yep. Uh, 43 children are born from women who were not pregnant before. And then a real a real prick of a man, <laughs> Reginald Hargraves, who's a, who's a billionaire adventurer, he goes and tries kind to... Kind of looks like an older version of you, really. Does he? Yeah, with the beard and the hair. I could oh, say that, yeah. yeah. All right, should I get a monocle? Yep, yep. definitely. Right, good. Do you not have one? No. I mean, one of movement, my... Movement, I believe. Uh, yeah, movement monocles. monocles. One of my eyes is better than the other, so maybe I should get a monocle. <laughs> just just cover my bad eye. Yeah. Um, and he, he adopts seven of the kids, mm-hmm. and they've got weird powers. What's going on there? Yep. And what then, is going on there? And then cut to the modern day. It turns out a guy, a rich adventurer who... Buys kids isn't a great father, and so mm. they've all yeah. they've all given up on that life. But now they've got to come back together because he dies. Yes. And what's 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 going to happen for an umbrella mm. academy? Yeah. yeah. What is everybody's thoughts on this in general? Me like familiar. To... Yeah. Uh, I took me a while to get into it. Mm. First couple because you messaged me after the first episode, and you're like that dance, know. the dance Which number dance? in the first episode. What, what, There's a bit where he, p- he puts on Tiffany. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah. it's just the most like. Awkward on the nose. Interesting scene where they all dance. It's like this is so. Lame. I thought it was really been... charming. They oh, thought see? they were alone, but yes. they were dancing together. Maybe yeah. you didn't get it, Charlie. No, I got. Oh, you mean when they pulled back and showed all of them in their separate rooms dancing? Yeah. Sounds like you didn't get it. I didn't get it. No, I. Uh, it's funny. 
I heard you guys talking about this last week, maybe a couple of weeks ago, because mm. I'd read the comic. But I yes. couldn't remember anything. Well, Same. I remembered parts of it. And when I was watching the, the show, it took me a while to get into it. I was like, oh, I'm not sure I'm enjoying this. But then I went back to the comic. I was like, oh, and it, <laughs> right, actually, okay. it actually filled out the series for me much better. And yeah. I actually it was, it was like, oh, this actually works as a companion piece. Works Absolutely. really, really well. Mm. Um, so I'm about halfway through the series. You can yeah. spoil it. I don't mind. Uh, that, that's fine. We'll, but, um, we'll, we'll mark spoilers for people. So I think what they, they do really well is they don't they didn't they, they don't rush explanations. They leave enough kind of like um, uh, what's the word? It's like MacGuffins up there. Yes. You don't you know just things that they put out there. You're like, what's going on here? Mm. And they're very patient in the way that they don't pay it off until later in the yeah. series. Yeah, so right I think I'm at the point where number five, you get his whole story. Yes, uh-huh. and I was like, oh. Because I'd forgotten all about that from the comic book. Mm. And I thought, oh, that was worth the wait because I was getting frustrated with what's happening. <laughs> yeah, right. Huh? And I'm, I'm in the now generation. Yeah, Tell me what's going sure. on immediately. It's definitely a fine line on shows. And I think Lost did this poorly of throwing things out there and then waiting a certain amount of time and then answering those questions. But I think the show, yeah, it gives you, yeah, it gives it, there's enough time where you don't, you don't get sick of it. You're like, just give me an answer. I think yeah. they kind of, they give you enough information as it goes along. And I think the design of the show is pretty amazing. Yes. Like it looks great. I mean, it's such a bizarre concept to bring to life but i think they've done a really good mm. job of making that kind of it's not the real world it's sort of like yeah. an alternate kind bloody, of reality bloody hell that cgi ape looks good as well for tv <laughs> that's amazing it's best so actor good. in the show yeah. <laughs> i mean it feels like they're shooting on the same set that they shot the haunting of hill house i haven't in. seen that but but yeah. it looks identical yeah. i mean because right. i only just recently watched that and it's like i feel like they've reused yeah, the right. same yeah. set yeah, yeah. What about you? Where are you at with it? I finished the series. Well I'm done, well me too. Thank that you. doesn't make you better than me. No, nah, it kind of does though, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just in this one specific context, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the win. Uh, and I I didn't go back and read the comic books because I felt like if I went and reread it, I'd just be anticipating yeah. what was going to happen. And I think in in rewatching it, uh, in re- in in watching the series, they have tweaked quite a bit of it. There's some elements that they have. Because there, there was there was the original Umbrella Academy and then there was Dallas, which was the sequel, and they've sort of incorporated some mm. of the 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 newer series into the into the original storyline, and they've sort of mucked it all about. But I I really enjoyed what they've turned this into. Yeah. Like, mm. I'd I'd be interested to see what the the original writer and artist because I haven't I haven't they they've seemed to be quite have been quite silent on. On the release of it, I'd be interested to know what they think of Jared Way. Yeah, Jared Way and, and My Chemical Romance. My Chemical yeah. Romance's very own. Yeah. There's yeah. some every time I hear like a musical sting, I'm like, is that a My Chemical yeah, Romance? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's every slipped t- in a bit yeah. of his like at some royalties. Yeah. Just like every a, time, every time there's like a drug reference, I'm, just I'm like, dip my beak a little. A chemical, yeah. chemical Romance. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. They, he was on um, Kevin's on Smodcast. Uh-huh. Um, Jared Way. Him and his brother. About two or three years ago, and it's a. I think they were talking about Umbrella Academy, and uh-huh. it was. He's a really interesting guy. Like, it's a really great interview. It goes for like three hours or something. Yeah. If anyone wants to check that out. Okay. Yeah, go yeah. For listen to a podcast. It's not on the Planet Broadcast. <laughs> How dare you, Charles? Oh, Broadcasting oh, Network. That's just going to be all white noise. Yeah. <laughs> so check out. <laughs> you know, what I thought. This Sorry, sh- was Charlie being racist again? He said something <laughs> weird about a Chinese broadcaster. And- <laughs> Uh, I thought it did a really good job of balancing all the main characters. I felt like all of them got a good amount of time. Like yeah. it didn't become like just the Alan Page show or just mm. the, the the guy who's addicted to drug show or whatever. I thought it, the way it balanced that was... A lot of movies can't handle that. Yep. Favorite character? I liked the drug... No, I liked the, the kid. The time traveling. He is number good. Five. Number five. Uh, he's is a good, great yeah. actor. Really good yeah. actor. Yeah. What's he from? He looks like he's a Stranger Things kid, but he's not. I think he's from uh, like some Disney Channel show. American kids yeah. are weird though. Like they certainly they're, are. They're, they're <laughs> also articulate and well spoken and yeah. stuff. Like I feel like Australian kids are very monosyllabic and don't yeah. make eye contact. Whereas especially actor kids, like right. Oh, yeah. when you meet him in real so, life, they're so like. I mean, the way they can like. Hello. For, for a guy who's they're playing really a seventy-year-old or however, he's yeah, been, he's right. really, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I, cause they I, can I, really, I couldn't emote when I was that age yeah. at all. I constantly it's, forgot that he was, you know, that he was a, thir- a real life 13 year old yes. boy. I'm like, well, he's he's technically the same age as the others, but he's also older. Like, yeah, that, I, that, that came across. I thought that was. He was really in the good. show Nikki, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn on uh, Disney. I oh, yeah. Look, we're all, Nick, we're all Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn is here, <laughs> so we know, we know that. He's 15 uh-huh. in real life as well. Uh-huh. So Who's your least oh, so he's favorite... not that good an actor. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> when he was 13, yeah. I thought he was yeah, amazing. Yeah, exactly. Who's your least favourite character? I mean, what are they going to do, though? Like, if they make subsequent series, I often think about this. Because is, is when you go through up. puberty? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like if you're 15, though, like, you've there's... probably done a lot of the changes. Because I look... 
I'm mostly the same. I mean, I, I look terrible. What? No, I mean, <laughs> as when you're 15. No, I'm like I'm like the same height. Right. I'm like roughly the same build. From uh, from from what age? 15. About 15. That that can't be right. No, I don't. Well, you mean, are not the I same way I, and the same height. Yeah, I'm the same. Did height. you shoot up? Not really. I just kind of stopped at like five nine, five ten, whatever I am. Yeah. I can't. No, I don't, I don't buy that for a second. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> you're a liar. You knew me when I was 15. Yes. Mm. No? Same height and weight? I just don't believe it. I that. mean, not same weight, obviously. Oh, no, I'm probably... No, I would have definitely been... Charlie, leaner Charlie. Then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, right. I'm making the... No, he's I'm making a muscle man pose. No, I wasn't. I was, <laughs> making, I was making a puff of fish face. Uh, <laughs> you know what I got told yesterday? I went and got a suit fitting for a wedding. And uh-huh. the guy said, you've got a really... Your waist, you've got no waist. And I'm like, thanks? He's like, no, it's a good thing. I'm like, cool. He's like, you've got to build like an Italian greyhound. I'm like, is this guy insulting me? Yeah. What is happening? It's all, all hitting on you. <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> like, <laughs> oh, you got the hips of a greyhound. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can chase my rabbit anytime. Yeah. Mm, yeah, Lick yeah. my face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but oh, did you guys have a least favorite? Um, I, I, I think Allison is probably the least interesting to me. I don't really know. Allison's that a name? Is she the rumor the sister? one? Yeah, yeah she's the rumor. She gets yeah. more to do, I think. Again, I'm only uh, halfway half, through. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I thought they're all good. Mm. Uh, to be honest, like Ellen Page. I don't know. Like, I don't. She's not my first choice as an actress in anything. I think she's yeah. fine, but I don't. Yeah. You know, I don't, But I, I thought Carl is amazing. That actor is so great. The Which guy, the, the, the druggie. The oh druggie. yeah, Carl. Yes, because he was in Klaus. Klaus. Yes. He was in... <laughs> so amazing. I cannot remember the character. <laughs> I can't remember yeah. the names either. But he was in Mortal Engines, which we saw recently, which yeah. you'd forgotten. But a lot of people wrote in and said Mis- the Misfits. Uh, which a lot of people over the years have said to watch. Oh, right. Because he's, um, he's an Irish actor. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I, re- I actually read when they were casting from, I actually auditioned. I was like, going to ask you about that. Yeah. Roles. Yeah. Mm. And I remember reading that on the page and thinking, oh, this will be great if they not if they get the right actor, not me. I read it as <laughs> like, I'm definitely not right for, for this role. But if they get the right actor, this is going to make someone into a who, star. Who did you... Um, Luther. L- oh, the brother. Spaceball. But then yeah. it was like... Tom Hopper's like six foot four. I was like, I was never really. Right, yeah, yeah. Because it's funny, when I actually watched it, I, I actually went, I found the tape of the audition I did and I went back to see what scene that I'd done from the mm-hmm. show. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is fine, but I'm 40 years old. <laughs> like, these guys are all meant to be 27. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, why did I even go in for this? I was way, way, way too old for it. So, and not nearly tall enough. Well, I think you look great and tall, Charlie. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> so well, anyway, they came round. They would have put you in the suit. You would have, you know, you would have had a couple of, nah, like, a couple of inches on you. I don't look like I'm half gorilla. Gorilla, yeah. Spoilers. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> oh, that's revealed reasonably early on. I was like, he looks like a gorilla. Yeah, <laughs> he's got the body of a. That's different, actually. I guess this is a bit of a spoiler. That in the comic, his head is taken off and he's given a gorilla's body. In this, yes. they give him a, a serum. Yeah, I mean it's not crazy. But they it's, a, do, it's a Martian gorilla. But, so but they it's also not crazy. in the yeah. TV series treat it like it is meant to be a bit of a mystery. Like he doesn't, you don't know yeah, why he's point. covered up yeah. the whole yeah, time. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, And I sort of felt like they could have made more of that. He's a monster, but they sort of brush past it real quick. It's like, yeah, oh, right. like, hideous, but nah, you're fine. He's got abs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, he's fine. <laughs> he's, yeah. How did I get that at surgery? That serum. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, what about the action sequences for this? Mm. Yeah, I think there's some solid. If they feel people are getting hurt, I felt, for a lot of it. There's a lot of want, shooting. A lot of shooting. And, yeah. And also, do you get... It's one of those things where it's like the X-Men. It's like convenient losing of superpowers. It's that's like, your favorite thing, Mason. You can friggin' teleport. Why yeah, are you running? Like, that's right. Why exactly. don't you just teleport yeah, yeah. somewhere? Teleport into a safe. Or he can, wait there. <laughs> well, there's bits where he kind of runs out of gas. Right, is that what so, it is? Yeah, so he can kind of, yeah, so he kind of he tries to do it and he's like, I've kind of used my six in right. a row. I need to kind of refractory period. I yeah. It's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Is that right? Did uh, no, you make I, that up? No, he doesn't say that. Okay. But, but, um, You've just decided. I've just decided that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah. But when I, I like that when that kid's going, like teleporting and kicking and choking and stabbing, um, those bits are quite. Yeah, there was a bit, good, it was yeah. like an R rated Nightcrawler sequence. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, that's a good comparison. So, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I want to ask you about the audition. So, ha- yeah. How did, I mean, I don't know how this works. People would be curious about this. How does it work for these things? Well, generally, uh, when I say audition for it, that means I was no closer to the, getting the role than I am right now. Like, mm. when they do these auditions, they send out. Sure, because well, you were in LA for. I was in, season, but yeah? I was in Australia when I did the tape. So okay. I just put, a, I just put a tape down. Okay, sure. So literally, they just. Your send, agent says there's a show. Here's this yeah. page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they'll put out a casting brief. They say mm-hmm. we're looking to cast this show. We're looking for males or females mm. between you know this age and this age. And so your agent or manager or whatever will put you forward. The casting agent says we'd like to look at him. 
can he send us a tape or can he come in? So yeah. they asked me to send in a tape. So I did one for Luther and then they said, oh, could you also do one for Klaus? Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, I put tapes down mm. for both. Yeah, right. But at the, I felt like sometimes as an actor, you get sent something, you're like, there's no way I'm getting this. Like, I, Yeah. Uh-huh. But it's always worthwhile putting yeah. it down because I'm like, like, oh. You could get on someone's radar for something else. Yeah, yeah. Well, security mm. guard number two. Yeah. <laughs> you could the guy gets shot in the face. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, with it, look, we're not going to give you Luther or Klaus, but we are going to give you Poco the monkey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have any experience with shoes on your knees? And you're like, I do. <laughs> so, do you when, when you get when you get a, a uh, this sort of thing? Do do you get any plot revelations, or do they just they'll give send you, a scene? you generally they'll send you a script? Yeah, I think they sent me the pilot script. Yeah, right. So they send me the pilot, the whole thing. Yeah, they send me oh. the pilot script, and then they is send that you. unusual or is that it just depends? Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's it's not. I mean, normally this stuff is all like, if they're if they're super serious about it, you'll sign like an ND, ND, NDA, NDA, NDA. Yeah. Mm. Um, but often like they're just watermarked, and so if you do send it around, they'll know because yeah, it's right. got your name on it or yes. right, your agent's name on it. But yeah. yeah, generally they'll send you a script, like every because it's pilot season right now, so I'm getting sent a lot of stuff, and it's all they will send you the the actual pilot script because okay. you got to know what you're doing. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I mean, your, your manager agent doesn't have time to yeah. give you the It's not like a secret synopsis. Marvel project where you don't know who you are. And- no, I mean, I think we talked about this last time I was mm. here. George Miller, when I auditioned for him a couple of times, he has no script, nothing. You go yeah, in right. and he sends you five. You can choose from one of five generic scenes. Mm. Okay, right. I think like one of them is a monologue from Network, the, the Peter Finch film. The Mad yep. as hell, I'm not going to bloody yeah, yeah. see this shit. And yeah. so you can just choose and... That's apparently he's done that for thirty years. That he okay, do, right. he doesn't get people to do the actual part. He gets to do something generic, and then he'll see within yeah. that if you're the right person. But it's all it's all different. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I remember I did wear an overcoat for the Luther edition <laughs> okay, because great. I remember when uh-huh. I read it, I was like, specifically, he's wearing heavy clothes. Yeah, and yeah luckily right. I had uh-huh. an overcoat, so mm. you know, I thought that was going to get me the job. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got his own overcoat. Yeah, so. <laughs> I stuffed a pillow under my shirt, so I look like bulky. <laughs> Look, the budget's run out. If we could get a man who has his own overcoat. Well, I remember seeing Tom Hopper, the guy who does play Luther in Game of Thrones. He's Dickon. What? He's Dickon in Game of Thrones. He's Is that the character's Samuel name? Samuel Tarly's brother. He's called yeah. Dickon. 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 It's, the joke. it's like a joke in the show as well. Okay, yeah, right. yeah. But I remember seeing him in Game of Thrones and going, oh, that guy's got an enormous body and a tiny head. And then <laughs> yeah. when I read if the If only Luther there was part, a role. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, it's perfectly cast. Yeah. Uh, Dickon Tarly, yeah, he gets incinerated by a dragon. Right, of course that's he does. right. Yeah, in real life he's fine. Just so we're clear. Uh, yeah, do we want to do a little bit of spoilers before we move yes. on? Yes. So it, it's uh, well, time code it. People want to jump ahead. Um, so it basically Charlie, cover your ears and so, go. Sorry, la, la. Charlie. Um, well, it ends with the apocalypse. They blow a hole in the moon and it uh, <laughs> crashes into Earth, and it looks really good. It does look good. It looks absolutely spectacular. Yeah, and then they it ends on a cliffhanger where they time jump somewhere. I'll oh, just try to jump back for one second. What mm. do you think of Mary J. Blige? I like her in this. Mm. Mm, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't recognize her. I didn't I didn't, has she done much her. acting before? I don't know. I don't know either. No, I have no yeah. idea. I thought I like the other guy. I think he's really funny. He's yeah, from right. um, Mindhunter. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, right. I was wondering where I recognized him from. Yeah. I is mean, it, is it, so it, is it a function of the character you don't like, or is it you... a little bit? I mean, she's the sort of straight man in that dynamic. Yeah, right. But uh-huh. I just don't, I, I don't find her particularly menacing or capable or right, what uh-huh. I mean I, they're, they're meant to be like mm. this kind of you know these blue collar yes, hit right, uh-huh. in like metaphysical hitmen or whatever you want to call it yeah. but I just don't find I just I don't know she doesn't strike me as, as anything I don't sort of think oh shit's going to go down when Mary J. Blige <laughs> right it's <laughs> the same uh, just to clarify she's in the Scream the TV series coming up uh, she's in Sherlock Gnomes where she did a voice how to, <laughs> and how to tr- train your murders you got enough murders it's too many murders you know that one how to get how away, to get away with, with how murder. many murders you've mm. done yeah, Mary J. Blige is in that bunch of other, yeah a bunch of other yeah. stuff 30 Just, Rock as a song what's her big song Jackers off my feet till I can dance you know that song nah don't mind that well, I probably do, but not that not version. Not that version. <laughs> Can you be a better singer, Okay, well, I'll, no, I'll sing it then as opposed to playing it off my phone. <laughs> Is this something that you're going to go back to? Yes, well, I'll complete yeah. the series, even mm. though you've ruined it for me. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, not yet, but we're going to now. Yeah, I know. Is there anything else you want to add add to it before we bloody move it along? About the ending? Were you, were you 
interested enough to go, yeah, I'll return Well, this. that's it's, it, what is interesting, actually, is going back and reading some of the comic book afterwards is that th- they have the, 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 the Apocalypse Suite, the first one, d- does end with them saving the world like the mm. this this is a this is a turn yeah. for the for the tv series because in the at the at the end of uh the comic book a huge chunk of the moon is going to crash into earth but klaus who in the comic books also has telekinesis as well as being able to talk to the dead just stops it right uh right. but in this he can't because he doesn't have that ability i guess yeah. or he doesn't have it yet so the world <laughs> is destroyed so uh I think klaus actually was my favorite because the, the way they develop his powers even his powers get more interesting as they go along. Well, he's the most sympathetic, most sympathetic mm. character as well when you understand why he's a drug addict. Yes. You're like, oh, yeah. Your Poor dad Klaus. was a terrible, terrible man. And my surname yeah. actually should be pronounced Clausen. So really? Maybe, uh, yeah, oh, but uh, yeah. we anglicized it during the Second World War so people didn't think we were German. Sure, <laughs> yes. <laughs> good, good move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I think that, does that, will that bloody do it? I, yeah. For sure. Yeah, I think I'd definitely recommend this people watch. Oh, you know, one thing I would say that mm. I really liked having gone back to the comic, there's a just a little nod that they do to the comic in each episode is the way they do the opening title. That was fun. Right. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. Like it's such a clever little mm. nod because in the comic book, they will just bring up the Umbrella Academy logo on an umbrella somewhere uh-huh. within the frame yeah, of right. the panel. Yes. Uh-huh. But and they do that in the show and yeah. I think it's really great. Yeah, absolutely. You know what else it looked like? That Lemony Snicket show. It also looked like it was set right, in Right, with universe. Diggy Hauser. No, no. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> so you've just ignored everything he's done since. Yeah. He's Doogie always, Howser. He's always Doogie I'm sure he's won Emmys and Tony Awards and stuff, but he's still Diggy. He's a song wow. and dance man. All right. You know what it's time how for? Would, how would you feel, hey. Charlie, if people hey. referred to you as Aaron Simons, your character on 2001's Head Start? You know what's hilarious about that? <laughs> what's is- that? I didn't know that you pronounced that Simon. So when I did my first scene and I introduced myself, I said, Aaron Simmons. And uh-huh. like they went with it. And so they had to change my character's name because I didn't <laughs> know good. how to pronounce Simons. <laughs> Amazing. How many, was that a recurring character though? That was, uh, what was that? Head Start. Head I don't start. have what any more information in front Heartbra- of me. It was a Heartbreak High spinoff. Oh, actually in the Heartbreak High verse. Heart- in the Heartbreak High really? verse. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. It was about... Yeah. Essentially, it was about, you know, remember the Nescafe Big Break competition? Yes. Where you'd win 20 grand, you could start your business idea. So yeah. that was the concept of the show. It's like six young people have won 20 grand and they have to live in a warehouse. For Nescafe? Western Sydney, no, no. no. <laughs> it was ABC. So <laughs> For the no, ABC. No branding. Yeah. No branding. Okay. It was one of those things where they, they I think our, our time slot was 6.30 on a Sunday night. Perfect. Oh, nice. <laughs> when everyone's just desperate Absolutely. for some drama, some team oh, drama. People are getting into 60 minutes at that time. Exactly. Oh, my mm-hmm. goodness. Whoever's on that show, whatever they do now, I don't know. Anyway, Mason, now it's time for the segment of the show. Oh, what are we reading? Uh, what are we going to read? Yes. You do listen to the show. That was a test, Charlie. <laughs> okay. That's right. Because we would have sat here all day. <laughs> I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? There's been a lot of pointing at each other. <laughs> Yeah, well, because normally we don't have to point because there's true. no one else. No, wait, we don't need to point anyway because no one can see us. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, man. Anyone been reading, inter- uh, reading, watching, doing anything interesting of note? Um, what have I been? Oh, so you brought up Maniac before? Yes. So I've gone like a few episodes, six episodes into Maniac. Yes. Mm, not loving it. Okay. I mean, I have like parts of it, but it gets better. No, it's pretty much consistently that for the whole, cool. the whole series. So. Yeah. 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 I mean, it feels like if Wes Anderson and David Lynch yes, made exactly. a film. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. And That's, I think that was my takeaway from it. I'm mm. like, I'm... And I like all the actors in it. I'm enjoying so. how interesting this is. I think it didn't, yeah. it didn't explode my brain. The concepts didn't no. destroy my mind or anything. But I'm like, this is an interesting world that I enjoyed and I will never go back to. Do you yeah. have to pay attention? Because I've, I've gone to watch it a few times and when I'm editing and I'm like, this looks like something I have to really watch. I don't know if you do. Okay. I really don't think... Yeah, I'm not sure. There's nothing really... It feels like, l- it almost feels like each episode's a bit self-contained anyway. And it's okay. once you get into the middle, it definitely gets self-contained. Is it yeah. Legion-esque? Like uh, different realities and Yes, it is, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, All right. Great. You I watched like- Russian Doll. I'm, I'm one episode, episode of this. That. Let's talk about Russian good, Doll. Man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've I've finished the whole thing. Because it's the good thing about that is it's like maybe six, maybe eight episodes, and they're like twenty four minutes each. I watched it in just a sitting, just in an evening. You're not uh, better than us. I know I am. That proven <laughs> that I have. Mr. Free Time over here. Look at this guy. Come Good on. child, for God's sake. <laughs> yes. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing at any point. Yeah. But uh, no, that I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. And I, 
That actress, I can't remember her Natasha name. Natasha Lyon. Yes. Who I hadn't really seen since I think American, American Pie. Pie. Yep. She's great. She's really uh-huh. good. Um, and it's it's Groundhog Day, essentially. That's My the, wife the has there. watched it and said to me, you will hate this series. And I was like, why? I like Groundhog Day. She said, you will hate this actress. And I'm like, okay. You're not really supposed to like her. I liked her. I thought, yeah. But right. she's she's... Pretty it's irredeemable in a lot right. of it, but she's got you know good qualities as well. What are you What are you thinking, Mason? Well, I'm only one episode in, so mm. I I have not even really got into the groove of the. So the the premise basically is that she she's at a, it's a it's a birthday. She's at a party. Yep. She steps outside. She's hit by a car. She dies, and then she's back at the party yes. again. And and is there a is it a, is it a case of her? Does she need to get out of the time loop, or is it? Yeah, so yeah, it's, okay. it's yeah, it's Groundhog Day, Groundhog like Day. trying to figure out what's the Happy Death Day. Yeah, yeah. Happy Death Day to you, which is that also? Yeah, uh, people are, uh, people like those. Never yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they made a sequel, but like, I mean, how do you make a sequel to a time loop film? Interesting. Another time I guess loop. we'll find loops. out. Yeah. And they, Edge of <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm in another bloody time loop, aren't I? Edge of Tomorrow is getting a bloody sequel. That's is a it? Time, yeah. Oh. It's a time loop. Edge year of tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> is Tom Cruise back? Yep. There. It didn't make any money, but but it's got I mean, a lot of traction. Yeah. Outside of. I think people love Tom Cruise. Has, in his attempts to kill himself, oh, he has won yeah, the people, public's it's favor. It's my favorite yeah. thing about him. Like that's all people can talk about, and yeah. so I think now, like everyone's back in back on the Tom Cruise wagon. Yeah. I think maybe his weird Scientology quirks have become a bit adorable now. Like yes. we were freaked out by them ten yeah. years ago, but now we're like, ah, oh, he's fine. He's probably harmless. It's because he isn't trying to. Like he hasn't. He spent the last. He's not jumping decade. on couches anymore. Exactly. He's not trying to acquire stars. a wife. Exactly. <laughs> a wife. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we've also mentioned on the show that. Oh, there's a theory. I think it's my theory. I don't want to lump you in with this. Okay, that good. they won't have Tom Cruise kiss a woman on screen because I don't think people like that aspect of him anymore. I saw someone else on Twitter posit a theory similar about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's the most asexual yeah, he movie yeah, right. okay. star because yeah. you never see him hook he, up with a lady. He might do a kiss on the peck on the cheek. I but think he, in Jumanji he did a patch. Yeah, he did. But also the, he was like 16. I guess that was the, uh, like he wasn't really him. So I guess maybe yeah. that was an From time to time, you'll have an ex-wife and like, a, it's, it's, he yeah. normally has an ex-wife and a daughter, but he mm. never. Speaking of the ex-wife trope. Yes. I, on the plane uh, down here last weekend to do um, Battle Angela Leader, which we never recorded. Oh yes. 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 Go ahead. That was Mason's <laughs> fault. I want to point out by the way. Yeah. Uh, I watched the Meg, oh, yes. which uh, is interesting, but that was a weird use of the ex-wife trope because they introduced the way they get him involved in the adventures. Like your ex-wife's trapped in a sub at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. And so he's like, all right, and coming out of retirement. <laughs> and then he goes and gets the ex-wife, just puts her in a hospital bed and then he's off, he's off to another yeah, adventure. Right. And then they, then they don't bring her back again to the very end where she comes out just like, Hey, I'm still your ex-wife, but you should go have sex with that new girl that yeah. you like. What do you think? It's all like, right. What's going all on? Right, I will. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of the Meg? Uh, oh, well, I was just really Correct. <laughs> waiting to see Ruby Rose get eaten. I was quite disappointed that I never oh, got to see. Did that Surprisingly happen. bloodless. Yeah, it well, is PJ, for a giant yeah. monster movie. PJ, yeah. yeah, I think it would have been. I mean, it, I say and the Meg's have, not even that big, guys. It's pretty big. I, I it's mean, pretty big. It would have benefited from blood, but. <laughs> no, nah, you got me. It is pretty big. It wouldn't have made enough money. I think it wouldn't have made the. Didn't it make quite million. a bit of. No, no, if it was R rated. I don't and it's that. also funny to see Jason Statham like doing comedy but not like self-aware fast and furious style comedy yeah. or spy, spy comedy he's very funny in that but yeah. when he does labored poorly written comedy it's yeah. excruciating yeah. like all the scenes with the little girl where she's you know like he's being she's been all cute and he's been oh, I'm just a tough guy but I'll give you a wink and it's just like <laughs> this is unbearable like I can't yeah. watch this yeah it's a good movie. We all agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love the Meg. <laughs> I think it's can't bad. wait to see it. Meg two, the Meg- Meganing. Yeah, it's that, that'll definitely still Megan. Happen. Still Megan. <laughs> still Meg. <laughs> Megan Markle. Yeah, there's four Megs. There's so many of the Megs. Claire was telling me the other day that people have turned on Megan Markle. I didn't know that was a. The people are like, she's a homewrecker and she's ruining the royal family. Why is she a homewrecker? No, not homewrecker. I've used that wrong. Obviously, maybe I have. You've stepped but in it yet again. She's James. a real like she's like the royals don't like her and she's mean to her staff or whatever. Mm. Anyway, I'll probably edit this out. <laughs> I don't want to put it up. <laughs> No, no, leave it in, yeah. see what the listener reaction okay, is. Okay, yeah. And maybe next week we, we thought, can pivot to all Meghan Markle. Yeah. I thought she was England's darling. That was my understanding of it. Uh, no, I think it's always been, there's always a bit of like Kate Middleton snoot, is. snootiness. Okay, yeah. She's sure. the King Ralph of. Oh, she is the King. It's very true, good yeah. Point. Good yeah. reference. Okay, anything else? <laughs> that, anything? <laughs> that obscure John Goodman film from 1990. Good reference. <laughs> Has anybody got anything else they are reading or whatever? Uh, Descender, uh, Volume Two. Oh yeah, oh, very good. That, that, Ascender's starting soon as well. 
Oh, the, what's a sender? It's a sequel set many years in the future. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's good. I like yeah. the artwork. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. I'm finally getting into Transformers more than meets the eye, which is the the long running Transformers mm. expanded Ma- universe comic book that's been around. It's like it's very, very, very much lauded like this. What? Thing. Yeah. Yeah. They're this, newish. They, yeah, they're quite newish. Yeah. They came out like 2016, maybe is when it started. Maybe you can help me because I, I remember when I was in primary school, yes. there was a run of Transformers comics. I think Marvel back then. This had is so it. up your alley, Mason. I know, right? This right in the So I remember zone. being. A I kid bet I don't know the answer. <laughs> and reading them and being quite traumatized because they were really super. Violent, like robots ripping each other's heads off. There was off a mean one and a nice one and, comic. What, right and so I tried to, I bought what I thought was the comic on Comixology and it's not. It's just shitty 80s comic cash-in right. comic. And I'm like, how do I find the robots ripping each other's heads off and tearing chests open? And it's kind of, you know, that remember like there's certain episodes of Astro Boy? Yeah. Yeah. Where Apollo, was it Apollo? Who's the guy? The, the, the brother? Good, the blonde, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it'd be super violent and you'd be watching like some android get sliced in two yeah. as it screamed yeah, right. for its life uh-huh. or something. <laughs> and that's, I'm, I'm wanting a bit of that action. Well, but there I was, there remember. was, so there was, a, there was the Transformers comic, which was based on the cartoon. And yeah. then after that, they had a comic book called Transformers Generation 2, which is where- In the, the 80s? Uh, this would have been like the nine, early 90s. Mm. No, okay. this was the, I distinctly remember being in like grade four and oh, okay. borrowing some Christopher Reitman's comic book Christopher and Reitman. reading it and being traumatized because like Megatron was ripping out Starscream's heart or something. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah. There was the. Was it an adaptation of the movie? It might have been. Mm. So there was um the, the Brit. The. There was also there was an American version and there was a British version as well. And the British version had more original stories Maybe and they it. were a lot grimmer. Okay. Like there was a lot of Megatron tearing people's heads off. Yeah. How do I find that? Uh, is that under Marvel? Is that Marvel Transformers? I have some, I'm cleaning out my parents' house and there's some <laughs> old copies under the house. Great. If you'd like to borrow some, I'll scan, I'll scan some and I'll send them over to you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were a lot... Because the, the American Transformers comic was monthly and the British one was weekly. And so they reprinted the American stuff, but then they had like backup stories right. that they they were original. And they were a lot, they were a lot more visceral. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, I want to see robots being mean to each other. Yeah, for sure. Don't we all? <laughs> the, the UK one ran from 84 to 91. So that's in your that might be that's in that's in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. That's in that the could pocket. be it. It adapted the US stories and also some... Um, yeah, we some just heard this. We just, just said that. Jesus. No, but some of its own stuff also. It's two <laughs> distinct things. Did you say that exact thing? Yes. Pretty much. Fuck you, Mason. You clearly don't listen to him. You've been working together too long. <laughs> I was yeah. Googling. He was Googling. That's true. I've got to give him his Googling yeah. time, you know? He just needs a bit of peace and quiet and some Googling Got to do some Googs. Yes. All right, uh, the next segment. Have you got that theme ready, Mason? Anyway, uh, more than meets the eye is uh, is uh, good, and it's um, it's more about the interpersonal relationships between the Transformers. Well, boo. Oh, no, on, that's mate. good. <laughs> that's good. There's also a companion series to that. There's two series happening concurrently. There's more than meets the eye and robots in disguise that are happening at the same time. Were you Somewhere. buying these as a kid, or were your parents shelling out for it? Uh, my grandma was mostly buying them. Oh, so. Bloody hell! I know, right? Little Lord Fauntleroy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. My grandma used to hit me with a wooden spoon. <laughs> I used to have to weed. I used to get a fork and go in the front yard and dig weeds out of the lawn to get that, five cents a weed. I think I'd that get. must that was like a time killing activity, right? That no, was that a was real task. Pocket money. But like they gave you a fork because they wanted to just keep you distracted. Um, I guess you're right. They could have given you a trowel. <laughs> yeah. Or even if you used your hands, I'd imagine. No, I think the fork was actually well designed to hook under the weeds without damaging the other grass. That's a good point, actually. It is really yeah, a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, do you want to do that after the show? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do some weeding. Letters. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. You know it's hot because the dog is out. Yeah, out like a light. What do you say there? It's neither here nor now. What do you say? I say... Well, it's not actually you, is it? Oh. No, that's me. The singing? I think I say... No, someone else sings it. No, at the they? end. That's me. Is it? I say... Oh, yeah, no, I say at the end, uh, they're only a day away. Oh. Nah, they're here now. Oh. We're going to do letters. But right again. Some... Right. Okay, all right. Let's right. go to the tape. Let's go to the tape. But all it's right, someone here. else singing the, the other So it part. is someone yeah, else what singing What do you say at the very end? They're... Okay, I, right. I think I say... What do you mean you think you say... Well, I don't listen. Uh, I think I say, nah, they're here now. We're going to do letters. Oh, nah, they're here. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I thought you say neither here nor now. Like, oh, this is very I philosophical. Could... Neither here nor now. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we don't have to go back to the tape. <laughs> okay. I'll put it in twice. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
<laughs> okay, if you want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter, or you can reach the show through weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com, and Mason will read maybe some of your emails. I'll read an email. Tweets, here's, here's one from Mike Jumanio. Okay. Hey, James Mike and Mason. I love that. Very yeah. good. Very good. <laughs> Senor Jumanji. Uh, <laughs> hey, James and Mason, and Charlie. Wow. Oh, that's how did right. he know? Did he he knows. Know. Yeah, he knows. He must be your number five type. I'm Mike a wizard, <laughs> and I may have to have back surgery with a possible recovery time of four months, oh, probably because yeah. of the wizarding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm curious what you two, three, right. mm. yeah. would do if you had... This, this guy's way out of the curve. If you had That's that funny much... that he says two, then three. I mean, yeah. if he knew yeah. I was here, just go straight yeah, to the yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was self-correcting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, he yeah, probably assumes that I'm just going to sit in a chair and not do anything. Uh, if you had that much time on your hands, what would you do? Uh, he says, I'm thinking of maybe doing a shot-by-shot remake of The Road Warrior with my two dogs. <laughs> so, <laughs> that sounds great. Working with children good. and animals, though, isn't that a, that's a difficult task? Well, professionally, but if he's just, mm, you know, in recovery, yeah. I if think it's a passion it's project. Well, I'm thinking you professional, know. big budget. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the way my mind How do you work. remake with just two animals? Are they going to be playing the extras as well? It's good. Well, different hats, obviously. Yeah, I'm just trying I, to think of what the opening scene but is. But I imagine it's he... Max outrunning those bikers, and yep. then he finds a tanker, and, and he's shot in the leg... So how do you do that with a dog? I think when it, I, I mean, think maybe because he's American, I think maybe he. Oh no, he would be. He'd be talking about the Road Warrior. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. No. Good luck to you. Yeah. yeah good, good luck to you. Yeah. Because he's going to double the voices. I think he should. Oh, uh, yeah. I think he should remake the. Three film. days ago, I saw a truck could haul that tanker. You want to get out of here? Talk to me. <laughs> If you could use that, uh, leave Mike, the fuel. Out <laughs> yeah. Uh, if uh, unleash the dogs of war. <laughs> <gasps> They are dogs too. That's, that's yeah, oh, there you go. That's it. Um, I would have remade the first one because then it's, you could just do it in oh, the suburbs. Yeah. You could do it with like yeah, three totally. people. Go yeah. down to Werribee. One dog is <laughs> Ma- one dog's Max. One dog is Goose. Just yeah, you know, that'd be easy. You'd probably get Steve Bisley to do it yeah, as well. Yeah. Sure. No, Steve Bisley's busy doing. He's very busy. Oh, he's so working busy. with uh, <laughs> with Ryan Johnson. Yeah, I, not the director. I just oh. saw that. I literally just saw that. Yeah. Sorry, he's busy. Go. He's busy. <laughs> Sorry. You mean busily. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do if I had four months off. I'd probably just keep doing this because my job means that I can do this. Yeah. Well, I, I have, I've always said that I have a... Is he in traction or anything? Four months off? Doesn't say. Doesn't say. Can, no, I guess if he's surgery, running yeah. around filming his dogs, he can... He's yeah, yeah I guess he can... You should, oh, be you should to... start a podcast. Exactly. Yes. A movie, comic book and video game podcast. Yes, with his dogs. One. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. No, is I there, say Is there enough room in the market? Yeah. No, there's heaps of room. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. I, I always say that I have like a leg break pile of, of assorted media. If I broke both my legs Including oh, and I had City nothing too. to do, I would, I would go through all the stuff that I always say that I'm going to get through, but I never have. So I guess I'd start with that. But then I'd, I mm. think I would, realistically, I would tire of that very quickly, mm. I think. I'd learn another language, uh, I'd learn yeah. about the stock market, just improve myself as a human being. Sure. Mm. I'd probably just lie down a lot. <laughs> get, get your booze on. Get you my know? booze on. Yeah. I don't, honestly don't. I probably read more books because I like reading books and I don't read enough books yeah. and I'm an intellectual. So that's that's. I'm sort of stuck between the world of like, I like to read. Are you guys but... both boy George? Because it seems you're in the bloody culture club right now. <laughs> I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> do you get audio books? I do. I, I, I switch back and forth. Do you find them hard to concentrate? Depends on the voice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm listening to Eckhart Tolle right now. Uh-huh. And he's got such a, I think he's Swedish or something. And he speaks in a monotone. And like, I can't get five minutes through yeah. without falling asleep. Yeah, yeah, right. Because yeah, the, um, the, uh, the idea, well, you know, of, you know the idea power of, of now, power of snooze. <laughs> <laughs> the idea, uh, that's the problem, because the idea of the of a audio book is it's supposed to be like, well, you, when you're too busy to, when you can't focus on reading and you're doing something else, get the audio book. But in a lot of cases, it's just... You, you, in one ear out the other. You have to set... I, so a lot of the time with audiobooks, I have to set aside time and yeah. just sit there I'll do and like stare. chores and, yeah. and, or walk. Or but some will work yeah. and some don't. Yeah, definitely. Book too, yeah. It's like I often read a page and then re-read and I've, I've got to go back. I yeah. just I just was driven, I was somewhere else. And so it's e- much easier with an audiobook to mm. not listen to that yes. person yammering in your ear. <laughs> what if you did both? You could really, like read along oh, like you did a kid. Yeah. Yeah. You could race Eckhart Tolle to yeah. the end. Hurry up. Yeah. I already know. I already know to let go of material. Thanks, you son of a bitch. <laughs> what do you guys think about this tweet? Uh, <laughs> it's hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. It's from Duncan Performer. Have you guys, three of us, whoa, ever thought of a spin off <laughs> podcast where you rewrite bad movies? I think I'd be bad at that. Isn't that already? It sounds like that would already I'm sure be. I'm that's a multiple podcast. podcasts already. I know Sandspan's had one. I think, every, I think every yeah. concept has been done as a podcast, yes. especially yeah. relating to films. Except uh-huh. for one about finding the man who wrote the Ivan Drago fanfic. That's that was the one. last idea. <laughs> you heard of that one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, incredible. Um, I don't know. Does that sound like something? I don't know. I often feel like 
pre-running bad movies. That mm. like, I don't know. Like, I I always feel bad about like just completely deconstructing a terrible thing. Like, I feel bad about kicking it when mm. it's down. In a lot mm. of cases, like for me, it would it would have to be, it'd have to be just huge blockbusters, and then it's you know it's it's. I think it's fun when you're in a room with your friends to make fun of something bad, but then to like turn it into a podcast and rewrite it. Suddenly, it's just I don't know. I don't. Mm. I don't think it's, a bit it's on the, the same. Yeah, it's a bit on the nose. Yeah, and because you I mean, write, you write stuff as well, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Do you so, do you think that'd be harder for you now that because you create stuff? It's, it's like to well, be critical. I know how hard it is to write. Well, no, a movie I mean, and... like you know, you know, I think. I think maybe I wouldn't want to record my thoughts yeah, right. on, sure, yeah. on stuff because, yeah. Because but... it'd have to be irredeemably bad mm. and it would also have to be from a creator that I don't like who's <laughs> like very smug about it. So well, that's, I used to work at a, a Venn video diagram's st- quite small. When I worked in the video store, my mates and I, it was a regular thing that we would scale the shelves, pick the worst cover we could find and yeah, then right. go home and watch it. And yes. I mean, that's like junk food cinema or any uh-huh. of those kind of, how did this get made? Or yeah, yeah, right. I think that's fun to talk about that, but to actually rewrite it seems like, work it I'd also be yes. I'm fairly yeah. confident that my version wouldn't be better yeah exactly <laughs> so, yeah okay because fair. it would it would you'd remove what would happen I think also is you would remove some of the flaws and then discover why they were in there in the first yeah. place you'd be like oh well okay well if I take out this scene and I then I have to put in this scene but then the rest of the movie doesn't work oh I see why they yeah, they put in the dumb yeah, scene because that, otherwise yeah. the rest of the you movie you know what might be more interesting is to find those movies and then Find those like those B grade movies or those low budget films, and actually pay to get a director's commentary and find out why the film yeah, ended up like yeah, that. That yeah, would yeah. be interesting. One hundred percent. I think yeah. to hear out. Well, what was the budget restrictions? Why was that? Yeah. You know, creature made of rubber. You know, how come that actress's hair changed between scenes? I mean, yeah. you could do that with big budget films as well. Like it's Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four uh-huh. is it? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's often that's. In, in a lot of cases with movies, that's the most interesting. You know, the the, the disaster artist, you know, just yeah. has mm. has had a decade long career of you know just explaining why that movie was so terrible and mm. and how and it I'm turned sure. into what it what it did. So yeah. Yeah, that, that's a great that. idea. Actually. Yeah, mm. uh, well, copyright a, Planet Broadcasting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. how about how about a podcast where we critique the podcast where they critique movies? Yeah, yeah so, I love it. <laughs> well, it, it, it's going to be called. It's not going to be called How Did This Get Made, but it's going to be called Why Are You So Mean. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, they were just trying their best, all right? Yeah. Come on, guys. This is from uh, Andrew Harding. Dear James and Meso and Charlie, you two talked, three, talked about watching the <laughs> Not Dune... Not convincing. Yeah, yeah. The Dune, <laughs> Dune movie uh, to prepare you for next year's adaptation. While the Lynch version is worth seeing for our strangers, the Sci-Fi Channel miniseries is a better adaptation, although a worse budget. Hashtag with your planet pod. Are you guys familiar with this? No. Uh, I'm aware it exists, exists, but I haven't seen it. I'm reluctant to watch any or read any Dune stuff because I want to see this new version because I love that director. Who's the director? Uh, The Blade Runner. Oh, Blade Runner guy. Is that what he's going to do now? Just take sort of credible properties (laughs) and... Just remake yeah. them. And remake them as bombs. Yeah. yeah. I don't know cool. what happened, guys. I don't know. I mean, this isn't my fault. I mean, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, bombs that are great. I should just clarify. Did you like Blade Runner 24? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I don't... Would you guys... Do you guys want to go back and watch June I stuff? Know, I don't know anything about June. Mm. I just all, I just have vague memories of being a kid and seeing that guy boils all over his face. Yes. And yes. it's like, it was enough to put me off. Yeah, right. And it's like... Baron Boyle face. Yeah. 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 And Sting in leather long. undies. That's what yeah. I remember. That's my impression of it. Yeah. So the, apparently though, I've heard this before, like this sci-fi channel show is quite good. Do, would you, do you reckon it would even hold up going back to an early See, 2000s? I also don't trust the judgment of the average sci-fi channel viewer <laughs> yeah, as right. well. Wow. I don't know. Take that, Andrew Harding. That's right, Andrew Harding. <laughs> yeah. um, when did it come out, the sci-fi? To, to early 2000. I think it was 2000, 2001. Who was in it? Good question. Let's I looked it up, up the oh, other please day. Please be Lorenzo Lamas. Oh. <laughs> I will tell you. Sam Jones, Lorenzo Lamas, oh. and Mark Jacko Jackson. Oh, what a, what a bloody Playing thing. Joppo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? It's me, Juno. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, I don't recognize any of the faces. I oh, know. Okay. Um, William Hurt. Oh. Huh. Alec Newman. Nope. Uh, James Watson. Those are just names I don't, I don't okay. know from here on. So, William know. Hurt, that was a good guess. Yeah, that's a good yeah. guess. Yeah. Look, it was probably mean to say that I don't trust the judgment of the average sci fi channel viewer, but I, I don't know. I just, oh, look at him walking that's, it back. I'm walking it back. What here a grumbly Jason yep. Reitman. <laughs> that's right. need to apologize. <laughs> walking it back. No, I don't know. I just think that the, 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 the quality of sci fi channel stuff is so scattershot yeah. that yeah. I don't know if I'd, I'd, I'd probably give, I'd give it an episode if, 
it was on Netflix or Stan name or some other right? sci-fi channel shows that I might have heard of. Uh, Are they all like cheap time travel things. Yeah, There's a lot like, of that isn't. It, it feels be, like yeah. well, I don't know because maybe I'm out of the loop, but it feels like whenever I think of sci-fi channel, I think of like your Farscapes or your right. Cleopatra twenty five twenty five or yeah, right. I don't know. Maybe maybe the I, Librarian. With oh yeah, Noel yeah Wiley. With Noel, Noel oh Wiley, man, yeah. they made a lot of those, didn't they? Yep, and they're all good. I haven't seen them. Winona Earp. They did that recently. Oh, I've seen some episodes. See, I've seen some episodes of Winona yeah. Earp, but it's again, it's a series. I'm always looking for a series that I can watch while I'm doing other things, and yeah. that became my series for a while of a show that I'd watch. And you could just walk what out. What other of the room. things are you doing? Ironing. Right. Really. Tidying. Do you iron? Tai Chi regularly. You Not do have regular. a lot of shirts. I do have a lot of shirts. Stacking a dishwasher. You know. Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Yeah. Yeah. Feng Shui. Nah. Trying to get the curtain to go up because it's one of those ones that click in and it takes a while to oh, find the right I hate angle. Those things, the stick. All my <laughs> curtains are that. Stick ones, yeah. <laughs> yep. They suck. Yeah. Exactly. Why don't they just make it fastened? Why do they make it detachable? I have a little question. chain. You want a stick you want a stick curtain show, you know what I mean? Okay. Just when you can just you're adjusting your curtains and you wanna do that. that. And the one owner up was that for me. And they, you know and the, the characters are pretty charming, I guess. I don't sure. know. Is she related to why? Why? She is the. Idea, she, she's in the. She's in the family. She's the last descendant. Got a magic gun. And she, or she's got a. Ma- she's got his gun, uh, peacemaker, and she has to. She has to re-kill all the men he killed back in the day because they're all back as that like. Sounds interesting demons. to me. Yeah, yeah. it does sound. Yeah. And super and like supernatural. Yeah, yeah. yeah. supernatural. Yeah. Is that still going that show? Yes, probably. It's flying, mate. <laughs> My God, yeah. those guys are going to be like ghosts themselves yes. <laughs> they've been ghosts for so long. They'll be investigating <laughs> themselves. <laughs> Jeffrey Dean Morgan recently came back. To do an episode, he oh, was their dad he's in their the dad. early seasons. So, yeah, there you go. Comedian, how about that? Mm. How about that? That's the show, everybody, I think. Mason, it. wrap it up. Thanks, everyone. Oh, Charlie, you're a fan of this show. Why don't you... No, do I make you do it? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Imagine if... I was you... about to do the intro. I was like, we talk about comic books and video games and... <laughs> So uh, I can remember. I can just, I can just imagine you just finishing the show off flawlessly as I, <laughs> as I stare at you mouth and gape, and then I just, I just pack up my little things, and put my shoes on, and I walk out. And well, I, I guess Charlie's up. the new Nick now. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. Charlie, thank you so much for being on the yeah. show. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for check out the web series. Lessons for life. Lessons for life with Alan Mercedes. There will be a link below. I there believe. Will be a link below. Absolutely. Along to- with Tofop. Yeah. You go to Tofop TV where you've got live Q and A's. You've got all sorts of good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Check that out. Just search for Tofop. TV. Uh, what if, what else you got coming up on the pipeline? What else, um, what else? Is that know. annoying when you've just done a thing <laughs> yeah. and then people? I, I often What's see that. Next? I often see that when they're interviewing, you know, people that they've just they've just, they've literally just released a movie or something, and the the interview is like, so what's next for you? And you're like, I've just done this thing. Yeah, I've just done this. I mean, to be honest, like it literally was it was hot off the press like a, a week ago. So I haven't actually. Thought. I mean, uh, this this time of the year for actors yes. is, is busy because mm. it's, it's when they're casting all the parts and stuff. Yeah, so right. in the midst of that, I did a tape yesterday. I'll be going for another one uh, on on Wednesday. So I'm just auditioning. It's I'm unemployed essentially. <laughs> sure, <laughs> is what I am. <laughs> looking for work. Yeah, if That's you're out the there, actors version of if you're out there and work. you receive a Charlie Clawson tape, give it a watch. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, thanks everybody for listening, subscribing, a nice review, telling a friend. Charlie, if you could tell some people about the podcast. Yeah, I'll tell I'm someone. Sure. I'll see. I'm seeing Will. Tell this Will. Afternoon. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Cool. I'm, we're going to the Eminem concert. I'll yell it out at yes. Marshall. Yes. Yeah. I'm oh. like, I know you miss. You like the Punisher. Well, there's a show. There's all of that kind of books and more like that. Oh, that'd be good. We're we don't. If he brings me yeah. on stage, yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about your beard. Yeah. I'll cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, thanks for giving us a nice review. Uh, thanks for bloody just just being there for us. You know. Yeah. We appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to support the show. Mm. In a less of a moral way and more of a financial way, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to chuck in a buck. We would appreciate that. Absolutely, we would. Any, any, any little um, amount of money you could spare. Anything well, else? You've, you've been working on that. Uh, you, well, you personally haven't been working on the, no. the, 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 the backyard studio. I've paid but it, people it, to do it. it. Yeah. I'm looking at it. I can verify as a third party. It is happening. There's yeah, not something there's, 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 a there's a wall up and out. There's a wall. There's cables have been laid in. Garbage yeah. bags there's so stuck much over the garbage. Windows. There could be dead bodies in there. It kind of yeah. looks like where Dexter would take people. That's the, that's the plan. It's yeah. going to be a very, multi-purpose space. Very soundproof, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. Wipe yeah. clean walls. It's going to be great. Uh, and it, Also, you can go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description if you want to click through there. If you want to buy... Quick plug something, Charlie. What are you going to do today? A monocle. If you want to buy a monocle, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no? Oh, I'm, it's Amazon. Amazon. They have everything. They have everything. I'll check if they've exactly. got it. You keep going and I'll yeah. check. Uh, or just buy what you're going to buy on Amazon and we get a little kickback somehow. Let's um, do. Let's see. We've got some t-shirts on tpublic.com. Mm-hmm. Grab yourself a weekly planet tea. I love seeing them out in the wild. Me too.
a friend of mine was saying that they saw somebody in our Mr. Koya limited edition Weekly Planet shirt in real life. Ah, I, that, there's that, not that many blew, of them. Blew my, blew my bloody mind. Tell you what, there's a lot of steampunk monocle shit here that's just not <laughs> oh, a really? traditional monocle. One's like a set of glasses, but just one of the lenses has popped out. So it's just like it's glasses that are broken. Can you, can you yeah. search uh, top hat with goggles on it? Yes, please. Right? I okay. will. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Keep, keep so you can't buy monocle anymore. Doesn't not on Amazon. But God. they've got like steampunk goggles where you can flip down a thing, where you can flip down a different <laughs> thing. That's, to look that's through. a bifocal, I believe. It's isn't ridic. It? Yeah, mm. but it's yeah. So it's look at this shit. <laughs> oh, that's that dumb. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Amazon, you've let us down. <laughs> You've let us down. The one I picked the one thing <laughs> yes. that's not available on Amazon. It was wow. a bloody callback and everything. Yeah, it would have been right? perfect. <laughs> quick, g- quick, look up shoes on your knees. Yeah. Look up knee shoes. There is uh, hats with goggles. Thank you. Yeah. Finally, uh, hey, hey, look. Thank you to the brute and the basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Mm-hmm. Um, that dog is dead. I'm pretty sure we've yeah. got a dead dog. It's not so. Breathing. Oh, no, she's alive. Oh, she's yeah. back. Everyone she's relax. Back. She's doing great. Yeah. There we go. You're doing great, Ollie. Good dog. Um, uh, that's, that's that's everything, things. I think, yeah. We'll see you guys next week for a Charlie? different... Bye. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, you won't see me will. next week. No, Charlie will. Uh, you know what? You probably will. Yeah, <laughs> so you, think I'm yeah, down you again. are back again yeah. next week. Yeah. Cool. You might. Thanks for listening, everyone. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.